Good evening and welcome to Canhammer, your stop for Warhammer 40k from the Great White North. Today's show is episode 114. It's going to be a, not, not a complete review of the Chaos Space Marine book, but we're going to cover um, a lot of the new stuff, that a lot of the game-changing stuff. You know, a certain little Magnus got a little bit better. Um, so, you know, we'll talk a little bit about those changes. As usual, I am your host, Chris, and I am today joined by my co-host, Mr. Uh, Darren. We have a special guest also in studio. My name is Ryan. Awesome. So Ryan, this is his first time on the podcast. So as a podcast virgin, I actually hate it when people use that, that terminology. But uh, as a podcast virgin, um, how did you get into the hobby? What armies do you play? Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I got into the hobby when I was a little kid back in the late uh, 1998 or something like that. It was me and a few idiot friends messing around in the local uh, local store, yep. uh, rolling dice and having fun. I uh, didn't know, didn't know at all what we were doing, but it was a lot of fun. We uh, uh, like a lot of people, it took some time off in high school because you had no money and no time, and then you find girls, and there's no time. For this <laughs> girls with girls, yeah, Stan- uh, standard Warhammer player, that's right, yeah, <laughs> the normal profile, yeah. And then you go to university and you have no time or money, and then you go and then you finish university and now you have all this time and money, yeah. So, uh, but uh, so I've been on and off for for years now, but I really like this hobby. Uh, I know your normal question is like fluff bunny versus competitive guy. I'm definitely a fluff bunny. Okay. Proud of it. Uh, but I've decided this year to try and be a little bit more competitive and up my game. Okay. So uh, I went to my first tournament ever, the Berry Batch that Scarry puts on uh, this year in February and lost real bad. Not bad enough to get the uh, consolation prize at the end, but <laughs> second last because I didn't oh. know there was a bottom you prize. Should have tanked it, yeah, you should have <laughs> tanked it last couple of games. Like, once you're down in the other fluff of any ranks, yep. just be like, yep. oh, I'm gonna get zero. Yep. But uh, it was good. Then we uh, then I took a team together to your Canhammer tournament, which was fantastic fun. It was uh, it was it was a uh, it was a great time. It was the first time a lot of my team had ever been to a, a tournament. And uh, which team were you guys? We were because Eldar. Yeah, okay. which is a long running joke inside of our uh, group. So, so let's get into that joke, just because sure. I think you emailed it to me, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't quite you know get the context. Right, so yeah, let's, yeah. let's let's let's. So what's yeah, the so joke? The, the joke was that for for years and editions and editions and for years, we would be playing a game and we'd be having a very straightforward encounter, and then Buddy would say. Uh, Oh, well, you know, actually, it's like this. And it's like, oh, why? It's like, oh, well, because Eldar, right? And then it morphed from just Eldar to any situation where yeah. things were no longer what you thought they were. It was just always because Eldar. So uh, I remember Chris told me when we registered, he's like, make sure, like, hey, Ryan, just so you know, like, you can't all play Eldar. It's like, yeah, man, like, I read the pack. I know how this is going to work. Because I thought, like, because it was because yeah, Eldar, yeah, yeah. they were all going to be Eldar players. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Which, like, if you could do that in an ETC yeah, style, yeah. you would take four out. Like, back in seventh, yeah. then you would do it, yeah. yeah. But it'd be more ironic if neither, none of them played out there. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, my armies, I have played a lot. Uh, my first army ever was Dark Eldar. Okay. Um, then went into Grey Knights back before they got their fifth edition cheese. So they were all pewter, and they lost me every game for two years. It was <laughs> great fun. Um, then we did uh, Imperial Fists, which is what I play now. Uh Nids and I just started a KDK Demon Heavy KDK uh, before seventh drop and KDK became not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see what they do with that. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know, they didn't the the Zinch didn't quite get the total package treatment that I expected them to get. Like they're still Thousand Suns separate and stuff like that, but. Well, you never know. I'm, I'm assuming you'll get like a wor- World Eaters and a corn, and then maybe yeah. something KDK know, related. Maybe, but... maybe. Who knows? I'm excited though. It'll be good. So you said you're a fluff bunny. Does yeah. that mean you read the novels, you watch the movie, the movie. And you, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, is that is that, that kind of fluff, or is it more like army fluff hobby paint? Yeah, I guess three, three you're facets, right, you're right. right. Okay. Uh, I really like army fluff hobby paint, if that's a category. Sure. Um, <laughs> it's definitely a category. Um I like uh, I like I love playing whenever you're playing is to find like the stories inside of games and to have a laugh and uh, and I've always played such that it's about like having as much fun as possible for you and your opponent yeah and then eventually I got uh, sick of always losing so I want to try and just up my game a little bit on the competitive level but I have no aspirations of being a top player just have cool. fun so well an interesting point so since this year you've decided you don't want to get your 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 you know proverbial shit pushed in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> 
what what are you doing to fix that? What's your goal? Or like like what have you have you started maybe a new army or what's how are you doing that? For somebody out there that's listening, be like, man, I lose all my games. How do I advance it? Like what have yeah. you tried out? Uh, so I started listening to podcasts, uh, yours and a few others. Um, I basically I'm trying to get as much information from people that know more than I do about this game. Uh, Really, what you need to do is play more games. Yeah. Uh, since eighth dropped, I haven't had the opportunity to buy a lot of games, but or buy play a lot of yeah, games. You could buy a lot of games. I'll play you, man. That was a Freudian slip. Right, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the size of the armies. That's right. Um, but uh, but I'm trying to trying to like you definitely have to play more. But if you think from our perspective, we only ever played with a small group together, right? Yeah. Uh, breaking out of that group and playing at your local store or playing in your first sort of set of tournaments really opened up uh, my eyes on how to how to play better. And you just you know you'd walk away from a game just getting smoked. You're like, well, I learned four things that I did not know about this game before this, and I won't make some of those mistakes again. Yeah, that's the best so, part. I do. Yep. You do find that a lot. A lot of crews that like maybe play in their basement, same four guys mm-hmm. every week, every week, every yeah. week. And then it's like the one guy's list evolved to fight the other guy's yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. And so like you have like this internal meta and then you get out in the real world like, man, nobody takes this yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's kind of, that's, that's a good point. You got to get your horizons out there yeah. and... Yeah, we got some flack at uh, at Ken Hammer just in good fun from some of the guys making fun of us. It's like, man, you guys are like have this weird meta. It's from like third edition. And it's like, well, essentially, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was what was painted. Yeah. I yeah, kind of yeah. just played it, yeah. and it didn't lose horribly, so I kept playing it. Right? It yeah. Good, good no, no, I agree. I think the key is really just to play, play yeah. a lot. But you got to you got to push the envelope. But you got to so play you see, don't play. It, yes. Right? Yeah. What you see is like when a, um, you could have like a crew, let's say, and they go to a tournament and they're not doing so hot and then they get a new member that's let's say a top tier player or somebody that's pushing the envelope maybe buying new stuff always being fresh maybe net like people hate that but the, you have one guy in your club that's net listing your whole club is going to get better because of that so you know you could be in this bubble where it's like this guy keeps beating us and then you all go out there and you're all start doing better because you've been exposed to net lists exactly, and, and yeah. different different environments so you know don't shy away from getting your your butt beat yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Because it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As long as you just take it, learn from it, change it. and Yeah, there is going to be a monetary investment if you're interested in being a top player. I'm not, like, it's not a pay-to-win game, but there no. is, you do need certain things, right? I mean, the hobby is not cheap for anybody. It's, so I feel like that's sort of something we've all yeah. become okay with, right? Yeah. yeah. And some better than others, but yeah, right? Yeah, and you know, there's there's ways around it, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, like the things that make me rage is you can snip brimstones and put one per base. <laughs> it just I would never do that, but people do do it at the ETC, and that's how you get these crazy advanced lists, right? They're just, you know, they're not necessarily WYSIWYG. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with proxying internet builds, you know? Like we were talking about Devin's list earlier. Mm. There's nothing wrong with just proxying his, his build and just, even if you don't quite know how to use it, but you guys have all now played against it, you're going to be a better player. Yeah. Do you want to explain Devin's list? For yeah, so Devin's, yeah. Devin's list is basically a warlock, and he's got the power, I forget the name of it, but it's minus one to hit bubble, and then he took all warp spiders, so when they jink, you have to roll like snake eyes and you lose a guy, whatever, nobody cares, they're minus mm-hmm. one to hit, so they're all minus two to hit. Then he has the yin karn, and uh, you know, you do the standard rules. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a list yeah. that I really like because Bringing I love back warp spiders, spiders but <laughs> and you already have like eighty of them. <laughs> uh, not quite, like seventy six. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> but he did quite well with it. But yeah, we were we were just talking about how it's different, mm-hmm. and that's like today. And it's you know if you get experience against that, or if you've never played against it, you're going to get caught out. That's it's right. Fast, exactly. it's aggressive. Yeah. yeah. And even today, we played a bunch of games, and we played some softer lists. Mm. But I think we tested out some new stuff. Like I learned, so just we played a few games. I played Stompa Orcs mm. against your Space Marines, and I actually learned that like Stompa is not that scary because you can just well I knew it, but you can speed bump them, right? Yeah, you can mitigate I, it. Yeah. And Ryan, so he speed bumped me really well, which means he put five man tactical <laughs> units yeah. up there, and my Stompa, yeah, he killed like five units, but that's all he did. Right. It was kind of it's kind of interesting, right? But it worked as a distraction card effects because I was panicked and it's like oh god there's a stomp right in my deployment zone immediately and that was just part of the mission but uh yeah it was uh, it was good it worked i split my fire and that ended up uh, with a, a close but a loss it was good 
Cool. So hopefully people now know a little bit of where you're coming from. I might have monopolized a little bit of your time there. Sorry about that. But uh, we're going to move on to, uh, I know Darren's been really busy in the hobby. So uh, what have you been up to, buddy? Because everybody's like seeing these boxes of Forge World yeah. coming well, into your house. Um, and like like box after box. So like, what's Darren uh, doing? Forge World has decided to actually give me free shipping now because I'm such a good customer. Really? Uh, no, I'm just no. kidding. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. No, they would charge me double, probably. Yeah, they, they, would they do not sponsor the podcast in any capacity. <laughs> no, in all seriousness. Uh, so, you know, I've just been adding... I'm really into Imperial Soup right now. Because I think even with Codexes, you can still Imperial Soup. Oh, yeah. And I think you can. You have the opportunity to just take what's good from each Codex still. And, yeah, you have to move your detachments around a little bit so that they're all one faction per detachment but you can still do it and so i'm really uh, to go with my gene stealers i've been working on guard and basically i've just been uh, building up my guard army so scions and i hate the tempestus scion uh, models from gw why they're so nice i don't like them i don't like them at all so actually i bought a whole bunch of elysians which are really sweet models with like the little visors and shit i'll give you that those are better yeah. sweet models a little bit finicky to put together and the plasma guns, so if you get plasma guns, you just get the gun. It doesn't fit on anything. <laughs> so you have to cut the handlebar so that the yep. hand fits yep. in there. You have to, like, it's, it's literally just a gun that's been molded with no purpose in mind. It's a little <laughs> bit frustrating. But, uh, so I've been tinkering with that. Uh, Elysians, Earthshakers, uh, Scions. Uh, I've been working on my sisters. So I got four squads of Melta sisters. And so that's putting, like, plastic onto metal and... Yeah, we, we've talked about that. You're doing the Dominion spam where you're yeah. putting them in the emulator, the emulators, emulators. <laughs> well, that's going back to work uh, yeah. with the two, you know, the heavy flamers there. Yeah, and that's just giving me more options on Imperial Soup, right? I've, been, I've got my aggressors ready to go, and uh, recently I just painted this Fire Raptor, which I just used for the first time today, um, just because. Um, How did and, it perform, uh, man? Is it good? Fire Raptor's sweet. It's a little bit expensive. It's as much as a knight, but it yeah. puts out firepower like a knight, I feel. And eight, it's very, heavy bolters. Yeah, quad yeah. heavy bolters. And it's very flexible. <laughs> with, with the fly and the 20 to 45 inch movement and uh, minus one to hit and then park a dark shroud next to it. And sometimes. you can take it. That's the thing is you can't normally take um, like that that's caliber of flyer in a dark angel army. You combine that with a dark shroud. That's like minus two to hit yeah. this brick in the yeah. air. It's pretty crazy. But as, as people have saw my work in progress video on the fire raptor, no, it's a ridiculous model to put together so <laughs> i've commissioned jamie to put my other two fire raptors together because i can't be bothered to do it again That's oh awesome. my god it was like a week-long struggle uh, it's ridiculous <laughs> really ridiculous and i finally finished priming up all of nick's uh killer can army so it's ready to paint basically so you've been going like mad man You're i've been crazy. doing a lot and then like freaking dw is releasing a new thing i have to read through every week literally <laughs> um so trying to do those keep up with those and uh yeah so that's what i've been up to basically sweet so have you been up to anything recently ryan or you've been kind of yeah no. you just moved right so. yeah yeah i just moved to to the beautiful area of uh, wakefield north of uh Nagatno hills area i'm told it's called oh it's one of the nicest nicest yeah. places in, in i think the country <laughs> very excited oh my gosh um but uh but no i still find some time for hobby so i uh picked up a kdk army uh, corn demon can army just at the end of seventh and then they became not a thing so now i am just painting blood letters and i'm loving it good it's a lot of fun i use um they're nice models, the new ones. Yeah, and uh, part of the... You haven't seen these yet, but one of the things I'm really excited about is I'm doing the bases using a Green Stuff um, rolling pin from mm -hmm. uh, Green Stuff Miniatures, I oh, think. Oh, I Green saw Stuff. that online. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. And it just makes, from, where did you order that? From? I think it's Green Stuff World. Green Stuff website. World? Oh, Green Stuff World. Yeah, and they do uh, rolling pins, like textured rolling pins. Okay. So I got some imitation Green Stuff, like some lesser quality Green Stuff, and I've been rolling these out as my bases, and it's a... Uh, like demonic sort of ritual base and the idea is that wherever these demons go they're just like oozing chaos into yeah. everywhere so yeah. it doesn't matter what table you're on it's gonna look great i saw that roller it looks pretty mm. pretty cool for like cobblestones and shit like that that's right that's yeah really yeah so i got cool. one with like demon text on you need a lot of yeah. green stuff though. yeah I've got <laughs> yeah well cromlech sent us some for capital city mm. this is a sponsor we gave him away for the painting awards but it was hard to give those away and not keep them. yeah they're yeah. they're sweet i know yeah. what you're talking about yeah there's a tryout. I'm definitely going to go back and get some more. Somebody should stuff. make one that's actually the size of a real rolling pin, and you make like a basically like a giant pie Display of board. stuff, and yeah, then you just good. and then you're like pouring out little circles from it, like cookies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be funny. Yeah, I found the rolling pin almost like has just enough to fit one of those 120 millimeter flying bases, okay. Okay. like okay. a big, big base. 
you get a little bit of overlap on both sides. Mm -hmm. but, so it's pretty good. So there's no seam that you have to like manually sculpt. No, it. no, no. You, but it's it's difficult to pull. Uh, anyway, it's getting a little bit too much into the hobby section, but it's difficult. It's it's finicky, but it's okay. good. It's really good. Awesome. And then cycles on to me. I've been working on uh, my demons because yeah, nice. yeah. um, you know everybody made fun of my stupid demon army. It wasn't quite competitive. <laughs> blah blah blah. So. I've uh, Darren's been opening me up to the world of Forge World, so I converted up nine uh, malefic lords. <laughs> Say it ain't uh, so. What? <laughs> what? 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 So they're uh, anybody that doesn't know because I've actually gotten a lot of questions about what they are. They're a Forge World caster for the Imperial Guard. It's basically Renegade it's, Guard, it's, it, but it's in the Imperial Guard index for Forge World. Really? And it's like <laughs> the Renegade Guard are just Imperial Guard that are Chaos and they have the Chaos keyword, so you can use almost. Not everything, but most of that stuff in a Chaos Army now. So it's awesome. You can take Earthshakers. You can take all that artillery. I don't have any of that yet, but I just they're 30 points, and they're a caster. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't go wrong. Uh, nine, eight, nine of them, nine HQs, that's nine smites yeah. for nothing. Like, not even 300 points. Yeah. Are you worried that uh, that will get sort of addressed? Because I know that some Malefic Lord spam happened at Nova, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, you're worried Something's going to get brought back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's too obvious of a choice. It's one yeah. of those things. So I always said that 7th edition Eldar was a prime example of this. Mm. You, would, um, you would run out of slots before you would run out of points. Mm. And with the new Chaos stuff, Brimstones, Malefic Lords, you actually run out of slots before you run out of points. And that's a sign that something is, is definitely over yeah. P, overpowered, mm. OP. But. Uh, I'm not worried because I just took flagellants and mm -hmm. I converted them. So either way, yeah, I could use them yeah. for like or it's, it's a conversion. And it, one thing too is I don't get conversion points for my demon army, so I, I was looking for something to convert. So it, it'll change the game. Just pretty solid. And then fire slayers are full tilt. Everybody should be happy. Are you happy done yet? You've been working on those for God knows that's, how long. My, my army is 120 models. <laughs> <laughs> fire slayers. That's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. They're, they got a whole new rules vamp. So I actually had to add in, I bought three star collecting boxes, which I haven't received yet, mm -hmm. just because you need the characters that are in them, and I need more of the, 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 yeah, the uh, Volkite Berserkers, because the only way to get the characters is to buy the set with the Magma Droth, and then you get three other dudes, yeah. and so I need four of these Rune Smitters, but you need four Magma Droths. Yeah, right. Right. And then, so the star collecting box is such a bargain that I just... Yeah, I was actually toying with uh, doing a Soul Blight army, because yeah. I think Soul Blight are cool, uh, but I don't like the... A, those freaking uh, Blood Knights are like 100 bucks a box for But you only whatever. need four units, man. The guy, got, he, the guy that won Capital City this year played all Blood yeah. Knights. But what I was thinking of doing, actually, if you've seen those Morgul Knights and all the uh, from Lord of the Rings uh, side, oh, those yeah. like, uh, more, uh, whatever, more, not Morgul's, or Ghouls, or yeah, Ghouls, more, whatever they're called. Morgul. You're right. Morgul's. From, like, the Lord of the Ring Morgul's. Yeah. And they're Morgul Knights, and those are really cool and would make awesome Soul Blight army. But they're a little bit below, like, um, Sigmar scale. A little bit less not by scaly, much. but not by much. Like, it's not a huge problem. You Especially if your whole army's like that. Put them on a bigger resin base, I think you'd be yeah. fine. Yeah. So I, 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 I had them all in my freaking cart, and I just had to press checkout, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, Darren, uh, what kind of 40K news we got going on there, bud? Yeah, so uh, I guess hot in the heels of the Death Guard Codex, of course, is the Admech Codex, which was released uh, yesterday. So you can check the channel for the read-through on that. This is not uh, much to a lot of people's disappointment, no new models yeah. for Admech. But it, it felt like they just kind of like took the, yeah. took the Admech, put them in a book... Yeah. And just kind of gave them a few little bits and pieces that they need yeah. to be complete, but they didn't really change and they, much. They put knights into there, and knights didn't really get a lot, of, except for a few stratagems that they can use. So some people are salty about that. Well, I don't be salty. Uh, rules are rules, right? Yeah, Anything yeah. that makes your knights better is better. They did release Call as a standalone box, which is nice, although it's almost more economical to buy the whole time for a box. Again. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah. <laughs> and then sell the other two parts. It's like 50 bucks or something. No, it's more. It's like 80 bucks or something. No like way. That. Yeah, it's a lot. Okay. It's a lot. <laughs> Um, so, uh, uh, the, so there's going to be a lot of new units for Death Guard, though. So this week is pre-ordering the uh, Death Shroud Terminators, which are like uh, Mortarian's bodyguards with the big sides. Those are literally the nicest models I think I've seen out of them in a long time. They, it's like nice. a box of characters. Like, it looks like a box of Typhuses mm -hmm. from 5th edition. Yeah, well, people are saying, buy these, and now you have three Typhuses. Yeah. Uh, and funnily <laughs> enough, Typhus coming out, too. And the foul uh, blight spawn, which is that dude who has, uh, I think he's the dude who throws all the crazy grenades. Or but it's not else? the typhus that we reported on a few podcasts ago with just the few modifications. I think that was a troll. 
No, it's a new typhus. He's completely new. That has like he's, he kind of has his scythe up like this, and he's got some nerglings around him, and yeah. But he does look very similar to the other. Yeah, but not as similar as like I think that was a troll post that we reported yeah. on the news for last time. And I guess you know, still to come are the things like the uh, the biologists, biologists, and the there's a uh, and those uh, those tanks. Uh, so there's a number of Death Guard models still to come out uh, in the next few weeks. I'm pretty excited for them. You know, Martarian's going to change the game with the amount of mortal wound output that he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. And then uh, um, there will also be for Sigmar. Oh, you're uh, talking about the uh, Firestorm box? So there's the Firestorm box. Oh, it's so good. Do you know what that is? Which right? has good. some death in it. So the Firestorm box is like a campaign pack that has all the different factions in it. And um, it has a bunch of rules for doing a campaign in a map, and it's like, I don't know if it's going to be more of a D&D style campaign, but it's supposed to be pretty solid. It's not out yet, so we don't have full sure, details yeah. up for pre-order. And then with this, they released um, basically three army boxes so far. They're $200. They're basically full armies. Yeah. Like, that's that's a significant value for $200. Yeah. Like, the Charybdis alone and a Chariot... Plus those Stormcasts are over 200 on their own. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so, another one of Games Workshop's bundles. It's uh, or like inherent bundles. But, yeah. But and the bundles are really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they're kind of cool because a lot of um, the lore around, I guess, Order has been geared towards Stormcast Eternals. Mm-hmm. And they did a little bit where they, they kind of worked with the Sylvanath and stuff. But this is like... So there's Warriors of the Great City, which is basically... Um, has... I think they might have mislabeled this. But anyway, it has basically the Dark Elves from... 7th edition, mm-hmm. the... Uh, what are those guys called with the uh, cloaks? Corsairs. They have the yeah, Corsairs, Corsairs, the Corsair yeah, yeah. Chariot, Charybdis, and they're like allied with uh, Stormcast Eternals, and then they have Dwarves, or Duarduin, allied with Stormcast Eternals, so they're all kind of making like an order soup almost, where they're okay. combining them, and each one of these boxes is supposed to come with its own detachment and own rules. But we don't know if those will be tournament legal, because they're not in General Handbook 2017. Right. So it's kind of iffy. But the idea is that you buy your box and you play your campaign with that sort of army. With that sort force, of idea. those okay. allies, and they have special rules, and you it's a full-on army. Nice. So, um, any other news there, Darren? Uh, no, so uh, we, I don't think we've heard yet when that uh, Blight Spawn is coming out, you know, with all the neural stuff for AOS. Haven't heard about that yet. But, but it's probably due. Probably soon, because with all the death... I, I assumed that they were going to release it all at the same time with all the Death Guard stuff, but they haven't, but... Uh, Hopefully that'll come soon. See, uh, and lots of people are hoping for a Nurgle battle tome with that. Yeah, that'd be that'd be desired. I know John has been very frustrated with it with his AOS yeah. Nurgle because they just they're kind of out of date now. But I've seen a bunch of people who got that Slimux the uh, snail figure, so that must be coming soon if they've been sending. Those <laughs> well, it came things. in the starter set, yeah. Yeah, I love the snail. It looks so cool. Oh, it's the best model ever. Oh yeah, it's yeah. so good. Now that about wraps up news. So Darren, you have a special announcement. Yes, so uh, sorry for the slight delay, but uh, we are doing the 5,000 YouTube subscribers giveaway, um, which we announced uh, on the day that the Death Guard Codex was up for pre-order. So what is the giveaway? So the giveaway is a Mortarian, which is like a $170 value, uh, and a copy of the Death Guard Codex. So that's a, that's a nice prize, I think. You know, it's pretty, and that was all purchased at uh, Multizone. That's right. So uh, that was all purchased at Multizone, and uh, sitting in my basement right now. So uh, what we're going to do, uh, what we've done already, is uh, using random.org to generate random number generator for all the people who commented on that YouTube video, which was how we're supposed to enter the contest, and uh, we drew the winner as Havelock Cobblepot. <laughs> nice name. Uh, I guess I'll spell it H A V E L O C K, and then Cobblepot, as as you would assume that's spelled. C O B B L E P O T. That's right. So I'm going to uh, post a YouTube video of this uh, so that pers- so that uh, in case they don't listen to the podcast, they know they've won. And I'll attempt again to find out who that person is. It could be harder than you think to find out who the person is <laughs> and contact them. And uh, congratulations to Havelock Cobblepot on winning the Mortarian and the Death. Guard Codex. So next next giveaway, 10,000, you think? Uh, I don't know. I might have some stuff to give away. I don't know. I'm, I'm a pretty generous guy. So, so stay uh, tuned, guys. So <laughs> we, uh, you know, like, subscribe, and you could maybe win some cool stuff. Yeah, thanks very videos. much for continuing to support the YouTube channel, and uh, we'll keep giving stuff away. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to the main topic 
which is the Chaos Space Marine Codex. <laughs> so this was like super, I guess, hyped up. I was pretty excited to get it. Um, I'm not going to say I was disappointed in the amount of information in it, because what it does for my armies as a Chaos player is great, but it's not necessarily, if you're like looking in for a whole new faction that's all different than the indexes, you're not going to get that, right, Darren? No. Uh, I think it added in a lot of flavor, and it brought Chaos Space Marines up to Space Marine level, I think. Yeah, a little bit of variety. I mean, even like to the extent that some of the uh, heretic legions have the same "quote unquote" chapter tactics as some of the loyalist legions, right? Um, obviously, I think Gulliman is what makes the Space Marine Codex, and so. But now we have Magnus, and we have Mortarian, and so you know, I think Chaos is getting some of theirs back. And uh, if you look at recent tournaments, it's Imperial Suit versus Chaos. Chaos. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, it's kind of different though because Mortarion and Magnus aren't in this book. Yeah. So that's one thing that we should point out there is that this book does not contain... It contains Legion rules except for the Legions that you're used to seeing have their own book. So clearly Thousand Sons and... De well, Death Guard already got their own book, yeah. right? We just gave one away. Um, but the rest of them are in here. The rest of the cast Legions, the maybe less popular ones. So... A lot of this has stayed the same, but what are the army-wide special rules for Chaos Space Marines? Uh, so, yeah, so they have their Legion uh, keyword, and the Legions will have their uh, uh, tactics, uh, as we'll talk about. Um, and then uh, they also got their marks, so each, uh, if you have a unit that has a mark, like in the brackets, a mark of something, you can pick that they can be marked with a particular Chaos God, and then it gives them something, which we're going to cover in a second. Uh, and then all the troops in Battle Forged single faction detachments get uh, objective secured, which is they already told us everybody is going to get that and they actually already gave us a list of all the factions that are going to get get that uh, in case because I guess some tournaments are running that already so um, good to see it was like actually happened <laughs> yeah it's nice when they yeah. tell you that it's yeah. coming because some people like, will be like oh, we're going to get our uh. But um, so I guess some people are already using that. That if they have the troops, then they're offset. But are you guys happy to see offset back? Like I know this is a bit out, off topic, but are you happy to see offset back? I like okay. What I like about OPSEC is it forces forces. It encourages players to take troops which have previously been considered attacks, but have like a, a, the role of holding ground, right? Yeah. So I really like that they encourage that, and I think it's another way to step away from spammy, weird. Only I'm gonna only throw fast attack slots down, or only whatever, right? Yeah, it kind no. of brings you back to a standard archetype of an army. I tell you what, though. I've played a lot of games so far, competitive and casual, um, and I can't remember the last time where I think uh, OPSEC would have got me that. You know, because things just die. Yeah, and, it's very lethal, this edition. Yeah, yeah, and turn 1-2 is most of the game, and that's where the game is decided. So i got to say, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference that everybody has their troops have OPSEC. Uh, unless the game changes radically with the whole bunch of codecs still to come, like I can't think of the last game where I thought, "Oh God, if I was had OPSEC, I would have." Won Especially because it's not like it was before. There's yeah. no tank shock. There's no vehicles with it driving on. It's yeah. a lot of like, well, my five tactical marines are, and I'm like, well, my forty brimstones create a circle that your five tactical squad will never get into. So it doesn't yeah. matter if you're OPSEC, right? I don't know. Have you experienced a, a game where you thought, God, if I had OPSEC, I would have? No, but I play brimstones, so that's a different <laughs> example because, A, they would be in the future. Um, so is Chris playing Codex Brimstone now? Yeah, Codex Brimstone. brimstone. <laughs> but, like, I could, I could, circle, next week. I could <laughs> circle the objective. Yeah. Like, even my orcs, like, they're not OPSEC right now. They will be, no, but right. I could circle an objective. So even if your Marines yeah. are, I don't care. And you have no way to push me off because right. I can remove casualties from where I yeah. want. So I can ring it. So I, I think you're right. It doesn't have as much of a... Yeah, it just doesn't... Ha so far, it hasn't seemed to be a, a major factor in almost any of the games that I've played. But uh, well, cool. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Cool, cool. Anything else that they got? They got their standard. Like, they, like what other like, special rules did they have? Um, anything crazy? Anything no. exciting and new? It's all the same, right? Yeah, it's the same stuff. Cool. So, some of the things that they did get new is this is going to be a weird thing. They, they basically took the dark... Oh, I can't even say it. Hereticus. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's right. <laughs> discipline, and they added to it. They, I would say, tripled it. It used to be three spells, and then they decided, okay, we're going to make it bigger. Now, this created some weird areas, right? Because Magnus is not in this codex, mm. but he, has, he knows that whole lore. So, what does that mean? And so GW released a post, and I have a, a copy of it here. 
And so they basically said, secondly, if you're a Thousand Sums player, you may have noticed that Dark Hereticus discipline in the new codex is larger than the one in the index. Don't worry. The discipline isn't being replaced, and you won't need to get Codex Chaos Space Marines to keep using it. Similarly, if you have Codex Chaos Space Marines, green check mark, you are welcome to use the expanded Dark Hereticus power with your Thousand Sun Psychers. If you're a Demons player, this change also applies to Bellicor. So what they said, unofficially, but in their blog, I guess yeah. a blog's a good word for that, is that yeah. um, if you don't own the book, Magnus only knows three powers. If you own the book, he knows seven. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? So I've talked to a lot of TOs. Quebec City Open is going to the whole lore. So I'm going to bring Magnus. He has access to everything. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I, I'm not a fan of them, like, kind of, quote-unquote, chickening out. For example, you can still use Index when you have a Codex. I don't like oh, that. I don't, and so I don't know how I feel about still being able to use all these different powers, even if you will eventually have your Codex, or if you have a Codex. or Because we don't know that, man. The Thousand Suns yeah. book might have a completely different lore. Yeah. So this Magnus may, may get replaced. It might not even have access to it. Yeah. But for now... I don't know. I'm a fan because I'm a user, but <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. wanted clarity, right? I was user like, user and an abuser. Yeah. I kind of was at this point though. I will take Magnus if the new lore is in effect. If it isn't, I don't think I would take him. Cause, and you guys will see in a minute why. Yeah, I kind of like that the uh, that the intention was like if you have this book, like go for it. And I, not that it's like pay to play or play to get more rules, but I really am a proponent of if you're going to play a game and it's a confusing game. Have the book in front of you just so that it can be less of a confusing game. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of like that that they, you know, it's the same name, so it's like technically he knows it. But the reason that I would say that like, you could argue he doesn't is that he has a page reference to the index. So because of that page reference in Magnus's rules, I'd say no. But this this new discipline changes the game for Chaos Space Rangers. Yeah. So with that, we're going to get right into that because this is what makes them in my opinion, yeah. top-notch and worth taking. Yeah. You know, um, somebody might, like, the bike sorcerer is back. Not really, because you would always take a jetpack sorcerer, but, you know, it's back because of this lore. So let's let's go through it then. So we'll start with the Mark of Zinj. So what they did is you have three basic spells, and if you have a mark, this is like your default mark. Yeah. And so the Zinj one is uh, Weaver of Fates, and basically, um, if you're a Zinj Heretic Astartes, which Magnus is... Yep. Units within 18 inches of the Psyker until the start of your next Psychic phase, you can add one to any invulnerable save taken on that unit. So you pick a unit and you get plus one. Here comes one. your three plus three yeah. rolling one Magnus again. <laughs> yeah, models that do not have an invul save instead gain a five plus. Yeah, it's strong. So that's, that's, that's really, really strong. Magnus is down to three plus three rolling ones. Yep. And one of the criticism of him right now is that he does eat lead against some opponents right away. Hmm. So I'll hand it off to Nurgle one to you. Yeah, so uh, the Mark of Nurgle gives you Miasma of Pestilence, a Warp Charge 6. If manifested, a visible Nurgle Heretic Astartes unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Uh, until the start of your next Psyker phase, your opponent subtracts one from all hit rolls that target that unit. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, um, but it only affects I haven't crossed Nurgle. It. Yeah, so Mortarian's not Nurgle, right? Yep. He is? Yep. And he's Heretic Astartes. Yep. So he mm -hmm. now just gets minus one hit. It's pretty good. He could, yeah. All hit rolls, not just shoot. Yeah. Pretty good. Now, I haven't, like, gone through the Death Guard with, like, their lore. He might not have access to this. I Actually, that's a good question. I didn't, uh, I no, haven't checked. But all you need is a caster of some sort with this mark. Yeah, exactly. Anywhere to cast it on him. Yeah yeah. 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 So you pay that tax, and there's a few ways to take that, which we'll talk about in a second. But, yeah. Right? All right, and the last one for Slanesh is called Delightful Agonies. I like that. Yeah. It has a warp charge of six. You like some delightful agonies, yeah. Chris? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if manifested, select a visible Slanesh Heretic Astartes unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, roll a d d6 each time a model in that unit loses a wound. On a 5+, plus, it does not lose that wound. So this is like the feel-no-pain sort of thing, yeah. but it applies to mortal wounds and... Yep. All of, like it, there's a similar gimmick along the, uh, in many other places. Yeah, it's basically feel no pain, but it's it's nice because one of the criticisms of Slanesh is that they die. Mm. So now it's like, ah, oh, you can actually I have this big unit of demonettes that always strikes first, but they die. Okay, well now they don't mm. die as quickly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, five plus feel no pain is always good. Yeah, it's good because that. I, well, sorry, that didn't work on demonettes. I just made a Freudian slip that only works on a star. Here, take a star. Yeah, yeah. I, knew I knew yeah. that. I knew yeah. that. I knew that. Given anything, a five plus feel no pain is is useful. So I, it's funny too because when this was on preview. That's one thing that when this Mark of Zinch Weaver one came out, we're like, oh, can we give that to Pink Horrors or Brimstones? You can't. You can't. 
It's only for Space Marines. So we'll move into the actual Dark Hereticus discipline. Some of these you've probably been very familiar with, some of them you haven't. So we'll start with Infernal Gaze. This is the same as the old power. It's kind of crappy. Mm-hmm. Um, select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches. It's a 5+. plus. Roll three dice, and you sort of suffer a mortal wound on a four plus. Yeah. Now, the only time that you would actually take this spell is if maybe you have a caster that knows the whole lore, and you're like, oh, that one character has one wound left. I yeah. can now pick him out. Yeah. Other than that. Don't you think there's a place for that on uh, in, like, uh, I'm facing a really elite army with a really low model count, and I'm going to want as many mortal wounds as possible? Sure, but you could... Uh, you there, could are there are better options. There are better options. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Um, next one there, Darren. Yeah, so Death Hex is one of the more popular ones. So good. Um, so we're charge of eight, so higher. You know, it's a little bit higher, harder to get off. Uh, select a visible enemy unit within 12 inches of the Psyker until the start of your next second phase. No invuln saves. Yeah, awesome. Boom! Uh, government. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that, so that's great. Yeah. Like you take a, um, basically you can take a Psyker with a, uh, a jetpack, drop mid nine inches away from the enemy, like yeah. behind a, a wall, you, that invulnerable save is gone. Yeah. Dead. Um, I'm going to talk about Magnus a lot because I'm fanboy mode. He's my favorite model. Yeah. yeah. He goes into a Night Titan. One of the scary things is, oh, if the guy rolls three five up saves, I'm screwed. Well, now you don't have that option available. The good thing is that, uh, so it, it's scaled back a little bit because it's uh, Warp Charge 8 and it's only 12 inches. So your caster does have to be a little bit, quote unquote, Close. in harm's way. But it's not as much as Null Zone. Where it actually just is an aura from your librarian, yeah. which means he really has to be in harm's way. Um, and then and it's also not like, it's like the whole unit. It's not just the But you have, you have a lot of options in this book for fast casters behind yeah. large walls of brimstones, yeah. right? Exactly. For example. Exactly. And yeah, some people say, well, the smites, you don't need it, but I don't know. Getting rid of an involve save when you, when like you have flamers yeah, no, or something like that is crazy. crazy. Yeah. It's really good. All right, so next up is Gift of Chaos. Gift of Chaos has a warp charge of 6. If manifested, selects a visible enemy model within 6 inches of the Psyker, so super danger close, and roll a d6. If the result is greater than the target's toughness, it suffers d3 plus 3 mortal wounds. If a character is slain by this power, you can add a Chaos spawn to your army and set it up within 1 inches of the character before it is removed. <laughs> of course, you have to pay the points for the yeah, spawn. Yeah, so which makes this useless. But, that's... that's 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 kind of crazy, right? Well, you could still just slay the character, and just not add the spawn. Like you got to think, you have a you have a couple um, chaos space marine sorcerers chilling behind a line mm-hmm. of brimstones. Yeah. Like I don't know, there's a lot of toughness three elder characters that might get close to even yeah. like marine characters are four or five you know, at the most. It's yeah. a thirty three percent chance to be like, bang, you're yeah. dead. Yeah. Most characters are dead. Yeah, D three plus three is a lot so of mortal wounds. At least four mortal wounds. Now a yeah, lot of your six. opponents can stay out of range, like because yeah. really, if you think about six it, inches is close. <laughs> but if you have a bike, yeah. now you have an eighteen inch threat range with that, right? That's yeah. that's hard to stay out of. Yeah. Now it's it's you know you're you have to cast it, blah blah blah. Yeah. You could roll poorly, but in a hail mary, bye bye Azrael. You know that this this power this power is not too bad, but if you have to pick from the six, is not. It's not, it suffers from that. If you have to pick, but yeah. oh, I like it. Like it, it's uh, like if you were rolling you your powers, game. like you know, it's not like oh, like I'm totally screwed. Nobody rolls like, powers. Now. Yeah, but nobody rolls <laughs> powers. So. Not, not since they gave us the option. So, so you had a comment on that? Uh, no, I was just saying. Uh, uh, Chris mentioned how you, if you had a bike or a jetpack, your effective range is 18, but it's actually a little longer if you advance. Right? Yes. And so models that give you a set number of advance is even better, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah bikes are going 20, right? Yeah, sometimes a Hail Mary could win you a game. And yeah. I'm not saying do it turn one, but, you know, end of the game, you have a level one that maybe casts, or you cast one spell, you use them for smite spam. This might be a good backup for that turn when you're in their grill. It depends how aggressive your list building is, right? Yeah. Like, I know a lot of Thousand Sun armies tend to get up in people's grills, because they don't die very easily, so you can like run up behind them. Uh, you can always have unit brimstones. You can have some cultists, things like that. Yep, pretty cool. That's your uh, favorite, favorite word. word. Co- word Pre science. <laughs> so we're going to pre science. Uh, basically, it's the same as before. You pick a chaos space marine. I, I just struggle to say heretic Astartes. You know, within eighteen inches of the psyker, and you add one all hit rolls made until the start of your next psychic phase. So that's better than just re-rolling. Yeah, Sometimes. plus one hits great. Yeah, because then you can trigger stuff that happens on six. A lot of things just cause mortals on six, mm. and uh, so or extra hits, right? So Death and False Emperor gives you extra hits if you roll six. Yeah, yeah the problem I have with that, though, is a lot of your crazy killy stuff doesn't necessarily. Um, 
it always hits on twos anyway, so you're right, like there's bonuses applied. But I don't generally personally take a large enough shooting or combat unit that would benefit from that. But if you're taking like a big unit of um, berserkers, berserkers, like hit on three, I believe they hit on threes, now, not twos, right? Yeah, but yeah. they get extra attacks. So on now six. you're like, oh, plus one to hit. That's now yeah. crazy. It's yeah. extra attacks on five. Yeah. It, well, if, uh, if one of the biggest um, uh, like in- exciting defenses is minus one to hit for things, then having the ability to plus one to hit things yeah. is, a, is a bigger buff than yeah. like looking at it in a vacuum like that. Because when you walk up to an enemy like Raven Guard or something, right? It's like, oh shit, I'm fighting a, uh, a Raven Guard army that's specialized in long range and they all want minus one to hit. Like, it's a big deal, but yeah. now I can help mitigate that a little bit, right? Oh, 100%. You know, GW has made it clear, I think, that most armies are going to get access to something that gives something minus one to hit. Really? Um, so Admech has a G- like uh, Great Knights have everybody has something it's a stratagem or whatever keep you alive that gives them a minus one to hit in some way and so it could come in handy for sure cool so what's the next one uh, number five is Diabolic Strength this is a warp charge of six if manifested Heretic Astartes model within 12 inches of the Psyker uh, until the start of your next Psyker phase add two to that model's strength and one to its attack I dig it yeah that's always good. That's never bad. <laughs> I love it. Put Chaos, Chaos is always about me anyway, right? Like some yeah. of the champions do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's not terrible. No, it's not terrible at all. No. It's, it's it's one of those great ones. If you're going for Smite Spam, that's a nice one to have in your back pocket for if you do hit combat, depending on how you kit them out, of course. Yep. And then the last one. The last one. Everyone's favorite warp time. Uh, casting value six. If manifested, pick a Heretic Astartes unit within three inches of the Psyker. That unit can immediately move as if it were its movement phase. You cannot use warp time on a unit more than once per psychic phase. Yeah. There's nothing to say about yeah. warp time. It's, it's, it's the same old, same old awesome. Just super good. <laughs> yeah, just super yeah. good. So that's cool. So over, overall, um, how do you guys like that refit on that lore? Yeah, I mean, you're still taking warp time. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's, still, it's still amazing. I was no. glad they didn't get rid of and, it. And Death Hex. And so... You know, it, uh, I can't remember if Death Hex is a new one. It's or? new, yeah. yeah so, That's the big one. You know, Death Hex, Warp Time, maybe, even the plus one infall. Prescience in there. You take a Chaos Space Marine Demon Prince and... Oh yeah, if you're Zinch, yeah, yeah. You know, that, yeah. Uh, the Changeling affects them, so you could have them in combat. You give them a three plus invol. He's in combat minus one to hit. That's not bad for the yeah. Prince. I think it, it's definitely worth having multiple Psychers for to get a mix of these powers. Yeah, you could do them all. Like, no invol save to you. My Prince has a three plus... And uh, this yeah. guy is going across the board to get that objective. I mean, we're talking for most armies at least three, maybe four good powers, you know? Yeah. The other thing you mentioned, Chris, was you're glad they didn't change anything. Like, they didn't, they're glad they didn't remove powers. I think Games Workshop sort of demonstrated that they're not really removing powers. They're just adding three new ones in. So I think existing psychic powers for all the future guys with indexes that are looking at their necro or necrons from psychics but yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at anybody else right uh, wondering about their cyclists I suspect they would be the same with uh, three new ones this is good because if let's say they removed warp time mm. like is warp time OP I don't want to get in that argument but if you remove it it's going to change so much of our list building skills right now like I've taken a chaos space for a demon bridge just so that he had warp time just to grab an objective just to get a line breaker right so it's pretty pretty interesting. So, with that, we're gonna move on. They added artifacts of chaos. So, what these are is basically items. You know, one thing that a lot of people criticize about the indexes is there was no items, and now they've added a bunch in. So, um, I guess we can go through. There's not that many of them, uh, so we can kind of give a brief. We'll give a brief summary for those of you that are looking out and, and just kind of wondering what kind of flavor it adds. So, I'll start with the first one. They have the talisman of burning blood. Um, a corn model only, so this is where those marks that Darren talked about come into play. So if you've marked your guy corn, um, you can basically, um, this model only, the bearer of the talisman of burning blood can advance and charge in the same turn, and they can re-roll failed charge rolls. Yeah. That's super thematic, really, really an awesome yeah. um, artifact, or talisman. Yeah. Yeah, it's decent. So next one, Darren. Uh, Eye of Zinch. Uh, Zinch Psyker only the bearer of the eyes Zinch adds one to the psychic tests when manifesting smite which is pretty good yeah why not it's not amazing because as as we said earlier there's ways to get smites for 30 points so why would you <laughs> yeah. invest if points you fail, in then just go to the next guy <laughs> yeah. but well it doesn't replace anything so I mean if you have nothing no other relic to give then sure but alright next up is intoxicating elixir this sounds slaneshi it is 
Slanesh models only <laughs> add one to the bear's strength and attacks. It's not bad. Again, not Deer bad. Deer pretty good. Always striking first, right? Yeah. The, depending on certain legion abilities you take. Yeah. Uh, next one is oh, Puss Cleaver. <laughs> Puss, Puss Cleaver. man, Puss. <laughs> <laughs> Model the power sword only. The pus clearer replaces the bear's power sword and has the following profile. It's basically AP minus two, but does D3 damage. Yeah. And oh. uh, wounds on a two plus, um, unless the target is a vehicle, in which case you roll to wound normally. So I'm just kind of thinking, like, who who is a Nurgle model that has, would have a power sword? There's a few. You could just give it to, like, a Nurgle sorcerer. Um, I guess so. You know, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Would that, report, or would that replace the force sword? We'll have, like, have force no, it has to replace a power sword. Yeah, power oh, sword. Okay, sorry. So it wouldn't be a force sword. So yeah. you're right, you couldn't put it on a caster. You know what I found so far in all of these codexes so far is that these kind of weapon replacements are usually not your choice. Yeah. They're not worth the points. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Axe, uh, this one's back. That's a blind theory. <laughs> what does that do, buddy? Oh, uh, so the Axe of Blind Fury is for corn, of course. Replaces the power axe. And the Axe of Blind Fury replaces... Um, Oh, and the profile is uh, strength plus three, minus three AP and D three damage. It's pretty good. Yeah, and you cannot reroll or modify hit rolls of one for attacks made with this axe. Instead, they automatically hit a friendly unit within one inch. Randomly determine which unit is hit, and if there's more than one, if there's no friendly units within one inch, the hit is ignored. So and that is, removes the goodness. So of this it, is what Karn used to do. Yeah. What, by he still does. Uh, he still does it, but um, yeah. So that kind of you know. I don't like it. You don't want to kill your own people. I like the the strength of it, but I, it's like, oh. Yeah. 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 All right, so next one. Uh, an old favorite, the Black Mace. Black oh, Mace. Oh, thing goes back. Yep. Model with power maul only. Uh, Black Mace replaces the bear's power maul and has the following profile. Uh, melee strength plus three, AP minus two, damage two, and its ability is D6 each time a model is slain by the Black Mace. On a six, that model's unit suffers an additional mortal wound at the end of the phase. It's not as good as it used to be. Well, no. and it, it replaces power models, and apparently Demon Prince can't get power models. Nope. Anymore, so. So. And you'd probably still take the claws anyway. So. Yeah, well, you the always prince. Claws yeah, the prince. Claws are yeah. awesome. And who else, who else can like rock a power maul? Probably a sorcerer. <laughs> I just don't, think, like, I don't think you're going to see it. Yeah, yeah there's like the so. chaplain equivalent. I like the damage two on it, but... I like damage two over D3, personally, because mm -hmm. it's more consistent, but... Anyway, Murder Sword is also back. Murder Sword! Power Sword, basically, it's plus one strength, minus four AP, damage one. At the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn has begun, you must nominate one enemy character to be the target of the Murder Sword. Um, <laughs> tell your opponent which character has been nominated, and each attack made the Murder Sword that hits the selected character <laughs> automatically inflicts a mortal wound instead yeah. of the normal damage. I mean, if you actually manage, after telling your opponent to get into <laughs> combat with that character, then you deserve to kill that character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You think so? Because you could like put a big movement item and then warp time, and you can... Well, I know you can bubble wrap, yeah, which you should what's do. What's your character doing? Just standing up yeah, and say, yeah, come yeah, get me? Yeah, yeah. And like, let's be honest, characters... Unless you're playing Chaos, your characters aren't combat monsters. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to think of it. Like, like, even, like, Gulamon... You put him out in front of your army to absorb firepower till he dies, and then you put him behind your army to buff it, right? So he's pretty good in combat. He's though. good in combat, but <laughs> how often does he really like walk through an army in combat? No, I don't, that's true. I don't think as often as especially if as, there's a as, murder as, sword there with his name the on it. Storm <laughs> choosing his rerolls do right. Yeah, it took Horus down; it can take Odin down. Yeah. <laughs> so the Eye of Night, Darren. Yeah, Eye of Night is for Black Legion only. Uh, the bearer can unleash the power of the Eye of Night once per battle in the shooting phase instead of firing any weapons. When they do so, select a visible vehicle and roll d6 on the 2 plus that suffers d3 mortal wounds. It's okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it actually, um, it doesn't, it, there's no range on it. It just be visible. Well, if you remember what it was before, it was a 75 point item that did, yeah. uh, like, d3 glancing and hits. Literally, like anybody glancing can, hits, yeah, yeah, anybody take it, it doesn't replace anything. Yeah. So, I know. like the point change in it yeah. <laughs> a lot. I just find it's like, okay, like, it might work, like, oh, yeah. you have one wound left on your dark shroud, bang. Right? Yeah, I don't like yeah. that you have to, like, two plus it first, and then you have the d3. Especially because it's once per game, it should yeah. just be d3 mortal wounds on something. Right. I do agree, but you do have a reroll, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, all right, next up is the Cursed Crozius. Word bearers only. Uh, replaces power mauls again. And it's strength plus two, AP minus two, and damage three. And its ability is reroll all failed to wound rolls when targeting an Imperium unit. Which Take is most of, the game. Most, of the game. <laughs> yeah. most of the game. Most of the game, yeah. 
<laughs> still, still kind of situational. Next one, good right now in, in the meta right now, but yeah. Next one, I love the Iron Warriors. Love in this um, Iron Warriors model um, basically gives you a save character of a two plus, and um, in addition, this model heals one wound at the start of each of your turns. <laughs> oh, so I, like I really yeah. like that. Like yeah. that is like yeah, 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 yeah. And since I play Iron Warriors, yeah, thank you. <laughs> we finally get the best item in one of these books. <laughs> Uh, next is a brass collar of Borgaster, which is for world eaters. Uh, they like to wear collars. Uh, bear of the brass collar of Borgaster can attempt to deny one psychic power in each enemy psychic phase. If it makes a successful deny, the psyker gets perils, which, is, <laughs> which is sweet. <laughs> it's cool because, you know, they're assuming you're going to play world eaters. You're not going to take any psychers. Yeah. But truthfully, you're going to take chaos soup, and you're probably going to have psychers. Yeah. So it's like, eh, okay. You know, it doesn't say that you have to be. The, I guess it implies you have to be within deny range. It doesn't say you have to be in deny uh, range. Yeah, I think I think to deny you have to be in range, but that could be a misinterpret. But yeah. maybe it's the whole board. Who knows? Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, next one up is the blade of the Hydra. This one sounds like Alpha Legion, and it is. Hydra. Yeah, yeah, Hydra, Hail, Hail, Hail Hydra. Hydra. Yeah. <laughs> podcast, <laughs> yep. Sorry. Podcast over. The blade of the Hydra replaces the chain sword and has the following profile: it does strength plus one, AP minus two, and two damage. And its ability is each time the bear fights, it makes an additional D three attacks. So I think that's almost exactly the same as the Teeth of Terra, which is the Space Marine version of this. Yep, yep. probably. Perfect. But it's good. It's actually good. This is actually good. I like it too. And chain like swords are everywhere. Everywhere. So yeah. I just and fin- Alpha Legion, uh, we, spoiler, have a good ability. Yeah. So. I just finished building my captains and I uh, put power swords in them all. I was like, oh, crap. I should have put a chain sword on them. Yeah, I was I like thinking, yeah. Just like <laughs> cut little triangles into the power sword. Now it's a chain yeah, sword. yeah, yeah. That counts, right? Yeah. <laughs> Claws of the Black Hunt, the Night Lords. Least favorite chapter. Or yeah, I don't like Legion. Them. They're kind of crazy. <laughs> Cruise is just like a weirdo. I don't want to like paint helmets. lightning bolts either. Yeah. <laughs> It replaces two lightning claws, um, basically gives you plus one strength, uh, AP minus three, and D3 damage, and you get plus one attack, and you can reroll failed to wound rolls. Which you could already do with lightning Yeah, so mm. yeah. it's basically like like a little bit more powerful lightning claws. Yeah, yeah. Fluffy. And, the, and the last one, Darren. Oh, well, this one's for you, Chris. Bliss Giver. Thank you. <laughs> I will take that bliss. Give me Thank some you for bliss, giving it to man. Me. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just put it right here in my heart. This is clearly for Emperor's Children, uh, which is actually, I don't like Emperor's Children either. Why not? Um, I love Emperor's Children. No, they're just kind of. You don't like the guys weird. rocking out with guitars? The noise uh, I don't yeah. like that part. But I love the black and pink. For some yeah. reason, that like really pops on the contrast. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Replaces bolt pistols, and uh, it gives you assault D6, uh, six inch range. Oh, uh, what's a bolt pistol? 12 inch, probably? Yeah. yeah well. um, assault D6, uh, minus one AP, one damage. Uh, the weapon can be fired within one inches of an enemy unit, which a pistol can, and can target enemy units within one inches of friendly units, which a pistol can. If an enemy character model is wounded but not slain, roll a D6 on a six, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. It, it's fluffy. Yeah. It's fluffy, like. Emperor's children have shorter range, lots more shots. Like you know, yeah. it's probably some microphone thing that's like screaming at you. Yeah, Blissful I mean, stuff. assault D six is pretty good. Yeah, so th- there's almost no penalty for losing pistol, right? Like this is just it's, it's an assault weapon, which means you can fire it after you advance. It right? has all the it has all the pistol stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's basically a pistol and assault weapon rolled yeah. into one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's not actually a pistol. No, but really. it has the pistol rules. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's very Emperor's children ish, right? Yeah. Cool. So that's it for the items. Um, it's it's hit or miss, man. Like some of them are okay, and that's about it, right? There's yeah. I actually think the space means have better items. I I, I could definitely see that there. Yeah. It is what it is. I'd rather the items be lackluster than OP, like the last edition. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm I'm glad that there's nothing like oh this item gives you plus four and vulnerable save for all yeah. units within twelve inches. Yeah. Like, oh, shield turn all sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 No, actually, I found so far in all the codexes that the artifacts are like nice to have, but not like I need that sort of thing. Mm. So it's been, it's been good. But is there any combos that you guys have, have seen or thought up of with any of these? Personally, I haven't seen no, too many. Um, and nothing, in, if they don't crop up in too many of my lists, uh, to be yeah. honest. The Iron Warriors one, when I'm feeling like running my Iron Warriors, which is usually a pretty fluffy day, um, I like it because it's an old item. And I like having a character that's maybe a bit more tanky. But that's that. So we're going to move on to the one of the, I guess, the second coolest part of this book. We'll save the best for last, which are the Legion traits. We'll go to the Warlord traits. Um, so I'm going to start with the first one. Uh, there are basically six of them. 
Uh, you can still have access to the ones in the rule book, but these are just kind of a new flavor to give you more custom things. A lot of them are very similar to Space Marines. So the first one is Eternal Vendetta. It's basically you can reroll failed to wound rolls for attacks made by your warlord in the fight phase against Adeptus Astaris. So against Space Marines. It's <laughs> pretty good. Take you, Space Marines. All right, next one is Flames of Spite. If the wound roll for melee weapon made by your warlord is 6 plus, it inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to other damage. It's okay. I would take that with that chain sword of plus 3 hits or plus uh, D3 attacks. I like that. You could do that and then you cast the power of plus 1 to hit. Right, now yeah. you have a pretty tanky like. That's character. right, yeah, because then you'd be exploding on 5s. Yeah. I mean, it'd be kind of a gimmick, but... <laughs> it'd be a fun gimmick. <laughs> it'd be a fun gimmick, but listen, it's a gimmick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not going to be breaking the internet with that one, but it's cool. <laughs> uh, Unholy Fortitude is the next one. Yeah, so this uh, add 1 to the wounds characteristic of your warlord, which is always good. And uh, and he gets a six of funeral pain. Yeah, so, so that one in the rule book has now been officially yep. just trumped by this one. Yeah, and that's that was the same with uh, I think Space Marines got the same one. And... and you can give these two named characters as well, right? So like Magnus now has plus one wound and a six plus, uh, or unless, does he not have access? Well, to Well, we don't know yet because his codex hasn't come out. But but, but based on the GW blog post, can I still also use this? Did it mention warlord traits? It it. Kind of, not really. I don't no, think it so. It didn't. Cause, and most of the codexes say the, named, the named reaching. characters get this warlord trait. That's right, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But if it doesn't say, if it doesn't say you get this warlord trait, do you get to pick one? I think the answer is yes. Right? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'll have to email the TO for the next turn when I'm going to. Mm. Yeah. So and get back to us about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Hatred Incarnate, you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by your warlord. Uh, yeah, or you could just take a Demon Prince. <laughs> for every unit within uh, actually that's to hit sorry that's to hit never mind <laughs> bad Chris I mixed up rules but anyway it's it's okay man I'd rather take a wound in a 6 plus feel no pain on my warlord anyway yeah, yeah. alright next up is lord of terror Diablo anyway um, <laughs> it is Diablo. the opposing player must roll an extra dice when taking morale tests for units within 6 inches of your warlord and use the highest results with the worst result okay yeah Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, that could be good. Yeah. Like, it's situational. Yeah. yeah. You'd have to be pretty close to your enemy. Six inches is short. Yeah. Uh, exalted Champion, add one to your attacks. I, I dig that. Because like there is some of the ones that, you know, buff your strength. Like, you know. It, like, because adding plus one attacks also adds to, like, you can take weapons add to your strength. So now you're getting more of a hit. And then you take a Demon Prince, you're reloading ones to hit. And then the next thing you know, you have this character that's just, like, just murking stuff. Do you know at what point the math is better for... Having an extra attack versus having rerolls on ones to wound. Like if you had a, a very, if you had a lower number of attacks, you'd be better to take the extra attack. But if you had a higher number of attacks, it'd be better to take the reroll on the well, wound. Well, because you can spend a command point to reroll. That's true. Yeah. I, I, you're right. Better to take the attack. Generally, I think yeah, it'd be better yeah. to take the attack. I could be wrong. I didn't like sit and math it out, but I'd rather personally. My gut feeling is the attack. I think you're right. More options to kill things. So now we're on to the best part of this book, and this caused a whole bunch of crazy controversy. Um, not controversy in a, like, rules way, but in, like, a fluff kind of way. This caused some flush, fluff controversy. So we'll start with the first one. I'll let Darren take it away because he loves them. What? Alpha, Alpha Legion? Legion. <laughs> I don't know if I love Alpha Legion. I love their fluff, but uh, I don't like their Their fluff like is okay. Uh, that... That book where, like, uh, what is it? Dorn goes and fights Elpharis or something. Is that part of the heresy or is that a separate book? I can't remember that. <laughs> but, yeah, they're okay. You know. Okay, well, you're taking them away then. Fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, assigning that shit uh, to you. Hail Hydra before I start. No. Hail Hydra. <laughs> uh, Alpha Legion. So, basically, Alpha Legion. Warlord, uh, in addition to the Warlord trait, your Warlord has a randomly selected... Um, if your warlord is slain, you can immediately select another Alpha Legion character in your army to take their place and generate a warlord trait for them, uh, including this one. <laughs> uh, if the mission you're playing grants victory points for slain warlord, they don't get it until they kill all the characters. Which is all, all right. Uh, which is it's cool. Because like, you might not have that many characters. But yeah, yeah that's super fluffy. And uh, yeah, I like it. So what, like, would you take that if you're playing against Space Marines? I think so. Like, there's not, it's de- depending on your format, Slay the Warlord can be key. Like, in a win loss draw format, yeah. where it's like, I can yeah. win primary, you win secondary, mm-hmm. uh, you don't get my right? Slay the Warlord? You know, first blood is often a big thing, or first strike, yeah. Slay the Warlord equally, line breaker. Like, you, you play your whole game to get those things. Yeah. So. More importantly, would you swap it out and take that plus one attack Warlord on your next character for a clutch, like, 
victory somewhere else. Right, I think you have the option too. Right, you yeah. like, I'm about to get tabled. He's getting plus one yeah. wound and a six plus, and he's going behind that rock, right? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. The, it does give you some options, but how many characters are you taking that are chaos space marines and marked alpha? Like you know what I mean? And yeah. legion, like like there's not a lot of character options there that you would take. Yeah. yeah. All right. So next up is Black Legion. Uh, these are the Long War guys. So this one's called uh, First Among Traitors, and it's the Death of the False Emperor ability triggers an extra attack on a roll of 5+, plus instead of 6+, plus for all models in friendly Black Legion units that are within 6 inches of your Warlord. So it's important that it says models. Yeah, not units. Yeah. Not units. So Don't daisy chain it out. It's a slight buff. Yeah. yeah. It's better than nothing. But... Usually Black Legion get the best. Not necessarily, like, <laughs> but they're decent. This just kind of goes, eh, okay. This, no, this next one is the one that I really wanted, because it's you want to be stimulated by things. Oh, <laughs> um, basically, um, so, sorry, these are the, the warlord traits, we should say that. We still have the legion abilities to get to. That's right, yeah. yeah. But um, basically, the emperor's children, stimulated by pain, you add one to your warlord's attack characteristic for each wound he has suffered. If your warlord heals any wounds, he loses the associated bonus attacks. That's very fluffy, I like that. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Next one's really good too. Uh, so Iron Warriors is cold and bitter, <laughs> uh, like beer. Um, <laughs> Iron Warriors units within six inches of your warlord automatically pass morale. I like it's not going to come up because you're not going to take Iron Warriors units that often. Like certain ones, like Legion units, there's not a lot of, of options there. But auto passing morale could be built into a strategy, right? You know, you only have to play an army like Tyranids where that's always auto passing round. And you see how good that is. really yeah. annoying, right? Yeah. 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 All right, next up is Night Lords, so wing helmets. Once per battle, you can reroll a single hit wound or hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, advance roll, charge roll, or saving throw made for your warlord. So it's or is an important part of that. So it's re-roll, re-roll hit or wound or damage yeah. or advance or charge. It's like a free charge, re-roll type or, thing. Once per round. Once per round. Once yeah. per battle round, yeah. Yeah, and which a ba- is both turns. And a battle round is each turn, like my turn and your turn? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're basically, if it's a six-turn game, he's getting six free re-rolls. But six he, fate weavers. Like, yeah, kind of. I kind of like kinda. that. I, don't know. I like it. Re-rolls are always good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. World Eaters. Add one to your warlord's attacks and strength characteristics each time he slays an enemy character, monster, or titanic model. It's very thematic. Awesome. Isn't that, didn't Karn used to have that? Every time he yeah. killed someone, he got an extra attack? I don't think something. so. I don't think it's 7th. Maybe before. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Kind of like builds himself into a fury. Yeah. And uh, probably my least favorite Chaos Legion. Word bearers. Preachers. Bible bashers. Um, aura bil- increase the range of aura abilities by 3 inches. We're just, we're just good. Okay, so now we're on to the really good part. This is the best part of the book. It's not quite the last. we got stratagems, but Legion traits and stratagems are the best part. Um, Legion traits, we're going to start with, um, basically these are a special ability that everybody in your faction will get with those, those Legion keywords. So not only does your Warlord get a special ability, you also get something for every unit in your army. So it's pretty handy. Well, so that has the Legion keyword. It has the Legion keyword and has that Legion keyword. Yeah. Um, so this does cause some issues with some stuff fluff-wise, but we'll figure that out. So Black Legion, um, they add one to the leadership characteristics of all models in their units. In addition, if they advance, it treats all its rapid-fire weapons as assault weapons until the end of the turn. So that's pretty good. So it can advance and shoot and you get plus one leadership. I like it. I like it. Yep. So the Warlord trait may have sucked, but that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Iron Wars Siege Lords, uh, they basically got what Imperial Fists got, which is uh, ignores cover and reroll fail wounds against buildings. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> I like Imperial Fists. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a different style really of gameplay, right? Really good in an alternate universe. Cover's just not a thing right now. It's so hard to get yeah. it, and so ignoring it is not that big a deal. This is true. All right, next up is uh, Dark Raiders, Renegade Chapter. Uh, it is units with this trait can advance and charge in the same turn. Yeah, so it's basically like if you're a Dark Raider, it's like not really a Legion. It's kind of weird. Yeah, the Renegade thing. Yeah. It's so, like a re- you're a Renegade, basically. Yeah. Is Renegade Chapters a chapter? That's just like the that's a catch all, right, for other chapters? Yeah, like you, yeah. If Dark Raiders, sorry, it'd be Renegade Chapters would be like you're, you're a newer chapter that left the Imperium. Yeah, yeah. so, so you're, not, you're, you're, you're just not one of the... That's right, if you're not Iron Warriors or Night Lords or yeah. Corn, uh, sorry, Word, word 
world eaters, then you could be renegade chapter and get rerolled to your basically. Your they chart. wanted that ability in there, and they ran out of legions. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, world Eaters, Butcher's Nails. So um, when you make a successful charge, you can make one additional attack with each of its models in the subsequent fight phase. So you hit even harder. They, hit. Yeah, they already... Yeah, yeah, hit even harder. All right, Night Lord's Terror Tactics. Models and enemy units subtract one from the leadership if they're within six inches uh, of somebody with this trait to a maximum of minus three. So stackable. Yeah, because there's other things in there. Yeah. So, you know, that's some people are trying to make leadership debuffing lists, right? That well, there is a weapon one that does guy. that, right? Yeah, you kill Roll one an extra guy D6. and they make crazy, like, high morale tests and they end up killing yeah. a bunch of people. But that people. means, uh, like, you could MSU your Night Lords here because they say for each unit you get minus yeah. one to a maximum, to a maximum three, three, right? Yeah. Three, yeah. 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 All right, next up is Emperor's Children. It's uh, units with this trait always fight first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. If the enemy has units that have charge or have a similar ability, just like other things with this, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player who's taking first. So, so they got the Slanesh. They got the yeah, Slanesh demon thing. That's, what I was, that's my Freudian slip from earlier in the cast about. Was, <laughs> so you can take Berserkers, which I know Berserkers are generally like corn, but you can make them Emperor's Children, and now they yeah. always strike first. Yeah, You can make... Emperor's Children Berserkers? Same yeah, because Berserkers, means, like Corn Berserkers, make, are yeah. not Legion specific. Well, Corn Berserkers are, but Berserkers aren't. No. No. They're and Corn Berserkers. Corn Berserkers aren't Legion specific. Aren't Legion specific. Not, you can have Corn now. Berserkers and Iron Warriors. Like, my, my fluff brain just exploded, Chris. The noise <laughs> Marines, you can make Corn if you want. Because there was like, yeah. maybe there was Plague some Emperor's Children that went to Corn okay, instead of Slanesh. Yeah. I don't know if that's. I'll it doesn't it. make sense, but. Berserkers, Noise Marines, Plague Marines, uh, what other traditionally god specific marine is now? Anybody, They're just generic legions. Marked, like, yeah. I don't know if that was just for gameplay simplicity, because I know, like, Iron Warriors historically were allowed Corn Berserkers only. For, okay. That was the only cult troop they were allowed, and then that kind of went away. Right. But yeah. now it's back. You can have Iron Warrior Corn Berserkers. And Noise Marines are supposed to be Slanesh because they're Emperor's Children. So now this is the thing do you take World Eater Corn Berserkers, or do you take Dark Raider Corn Berserkers? I think they can already... Uh, can I already advance in charge? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Does it affect them if you get it twice? We have options, and options are good. But anyway, it's pretty cool, right? Like, But that's like that drives people nuts. That's the big one. Emperor's Children, Corn... Like, basically, my Corn Armory is Emperor's Children. Yeah. yeah. That's the big, like, piss people off type thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up is Alpha Legion. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra. Your Hydra. opponent must subtract one uh, from hit rolls that are uh, within units... Sorry, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls that target units with this trait if they are more than twelve inches away. Money. So, like, so they got the Raven Guard. Raven Guard. Hail Hydra, yeah. it's yeah. so good. Yeah, no, it's excellent. I don't mean to like dismiss it. Oh, they just got the Raven Guard one. The Raven Guard one is awesome. And uh, word bears, profane zeal, we will fail morale tests. <laughs> And they, they must, shall know no fear. They must hate <laughs> word bears. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. They wrote a lot of freaking books about them, so we can't hate them that much. But So the real winners, I think, are the Emperor's Children, the Alpha Legion. I like the Dark Raiders one. Um, mm-hmm. That's a... Yeah, that's really the best ones. Yeah, I can see the Night Lords working if you built like a whole army I don't think so either. But, but then even so. people like Marines will just laugh at you. So like even if your MSU uh, Night Lords come in and they like kill half my unit to leadership... Do you really care that there's MSU Night Lords right in yeah. front of you? And it doesn't deal with stuff like conscripts that have commissars. Yes. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I'll shoot my one dude. Yeah. But uh, that Emperor's Children one actually kind of broke my mind. Because it came as a rules question. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. What? Oh, oh, that's stupid. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So the next thing is they gave a whole bunch of faction. Three pages. We're not going to go through them all. Um we're going to go through the good Highlights. ones. Because a lot of them are very samey samey to other ones yeah. in the past. So, you know, they've been doing that with the Codex. They, some of the stratagems run through all the Codexes so far. So far. Well, but they're yeah. also all Marine-based Codexes, right? Yeah. I'm sure, like, Astro Militarum won't get the same strategy. Well, Admet got some of the same stuff. and But they're kind of Marine. Yeah. But, yeah, so basically, now you can just, in your games, pay command points to do extra abilities. So you're not just stuck to the standard three. But, of course, this list gets quite small. When you choose a Legion, you've now cut off, like, half of them. So, yeah. um, so Darren, pick one that you like that's kind of good. We'll go through about three or four, and then we'll yeah. move on. So you guys get a feel for what to look out for. You know, so the one that everybody's talking about, of course, is uh, Tide of Traitors. Oh, well, that's the best. Yeah, so this is two command points, and you use it at the end of your movement phase... You pick a Chaos Cultist unit and remove it from the battlefield and then set it up again six inches from the edge of the battlefield, nine inches away from the enemy at full strength. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. For only yeah. two CP. Yeah, so Admech just got this 
uh, except it's three CP, mm-hmm. and um, you have to set it up in your deployment zone, basically. So, <laughs> so yeah. this is good. Yeah, that's good. But this is, this is cultists only, though. Or a little bit better, and cultists are yeah. Like, this is only like, cultists, yeah. So cultists but... appear back there. They grab an objective, but they're not going to kill much. And yeah. uh, once you kill a few of them, they run away pretty quickly. There's no commissars yeah. poking them forward. Mm-hmm. And they, I, I'm assuming your Dark Apostle won't be anywhere near them either. Yeah. Or any of that buff yeah. stuff if you put them too far away. Yeah. yeah. You could conga line them though, I guess. Yeah. All right. I like uh, Fury of Corn, which is uh, using at the end of the fight phase, select a, a corn infantry or biker unit, and they can immediately fight again. This costs three CP. Yeah. Uh, I like fight again stuff. I wonder if it's not going to be necessary because if you have all of these stacking buffs with corn, if you're going to have an opponent left alive at the end. But they're going to do it twice and then now they can do it for you. That's right, like that's nuts. <laughs> but now it's like, oh, that 50 uh, conscript unit is gone. Yeah. But you know, Chaos Spacer means you can run with a bunch of command points, so 3 CP maybe not a huge amount, whereas some other factions can't get a lot of command points inherently, and so 3 CP is like. You no, know, it takes up a lot of your CP. Yeah. Now the next one, this is this is like what I was kind of hinting at in the when we were in the uh, the heretic uh, discipline. I'm having trouble saying that word, but anyway, it's basically one CP, and you can um, just choose a new power. Yep. So that's what I was kind of getting at, right? Like you you're not stuck to one power in that lore. You can just be like, oh, um, you have no invulnerable saves. Well, I don't have that um, death hex or whatever there. But I need it. Oh, because you're playing a horror bunk- bunker, which nobody plays but me. Yep. Um, I'm going to take away your involve save now. Yeah. Like, that's I, awesome. I like, like, it, like, it gives you... It, so you don't need three sorcerers. You need one. And then you pick the power you need in that instance, and bang, you're good to go. Yep. One CP. And of course, these only work um, if it's Battle Ford Chaos Space Marine Detachment. So that's to be a complete detachment, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Okay. Um, endless Cacophony. People running uh, Noise Marines... Uh, basically, your heretic Astartes Slanesh infantry or bikers can immediately shoot again for 2 CP. Which is okay. strong. Uh, I like Zinch's Great Sorcerer. It's an end of psychic phase, uh, usable by Astartes Zinch Psyker only. Uh, the Psyker can immediately attempt to manifest one additional Psyker power that turn. So that uh, would not allow them to cast the same one twice. It's just they get to, know, they get to fire another, another one off. Yeah, you okay. can never. You, but the the casting twice is in the rule book for match play. Okay. So if you weren't playing match play, you could use that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you're right. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, one I like is um, forward operatives, yeah. which is if you're Alpha Legion, which we already said is quite good. Um, you basically can set up a unit as if it's like a scout, nine inches away from an enemy uh, model, um, but you can go in the battle. You can go in their deployment zone, which is kind of good. So you pick a nice big infantry unit, one CP, boom, you're in your grill, um, but you can only use it once. No, right? no, no, no. But you can't use it because it's before the game. Does yeah. that count as a phase? This is That's exactly what the same me. as the Raven Guard one. So you do it before, after, uh, you do it while you're deploying. Yes. So it's not a phase. But can game. you do it five times? Yes, you Because you're out of a phase? So you got to use five CP. So, okay. So that's something that, like, is that fact? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so then you can do it. Because <laughs> yeah. cause I was debating that, and then I, I didn't check the fact. But And then you don't set them up until after C's. But then you're still, you know... If you don't get the first first turn, then you wasted mm-hmm. five CP just to set you guys up. Unless you want to put them out front, of course. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's 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 really good. But then oh, again, yeah. you like don't want to be close. I'm writing whole Raven Guard lists around this stratagem, yeah. right? Where you just spam four or five CP right at the beginning. I think you should only be allowed to do it once. But I, I get it if you could do it on limited times. I think Clarence said that you could do it on limited times. And I was like, I don't think so. But <laughs> I'm always wrong, so that's cool. Anything else? Uh, yeah, those are kind of the big ones that stand out. I do like the Night Lords one that gives you minus one to hit, of course, but it's just Night Lords. So, um, and then of course you got all the standard ones that everyone else gets. So the Flak Missile thing, the Fire Frenzy, you get the Kill Shot thing for the three Predators that ends up doing Mortal Wounds, and you got the ability to give more than one Relic if you spend mm-hmm. one or three CPs. And Veterans of the Long War now is a stratagem that gives you uh, add one to Wound Rolls, which is pretty good. So these are all kind of other ones. Overall, it, it's like it's a nice set of stratagems. Yeah, it's it's very it's very flavorful and, and very balanced with Space Marine because they all have a similar ones. So cool. So that's about it for the Space Marine changes and updates. Hopefully, you guys uh, were able to. If you don't have access to the book or any PDFs or, or things like that, you can listen to. Okay, my opponent can do this. Mm. So when you play a guy with Karma Berserkers that strikes first, and you're like, that's retarded. 
it's actually <laughs> legit. Like you now you understand. Oh, you're minus one to hit because you're Alpha Legion. So that's kind of our goal with that. So what's your final thoughts on the Chaos book, uh, Ryan? Uh, I really like it. I think uh, just like all of the other books so far, it brought a lot of fluff back to a uh, intentionally bland uh, index. Yes. But uh, I really like. I love. There are so many little combos in here, and some of them are. Uh, uh, like, you could stack too many things on top of each other, but uh, there are just... I feel like there's a lot of places to go inside of this codex, and I am excited to start thinking about ways to do it. Yeah, couldn't agree more. It's a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah. I played uh, a game with my Raven Guard, and I had this three pages of stratagems. I'm like, I don't know what to use. <laughs> yeah, like, what you do is you should, like, photocopy them or print them, yeah. and then you take a black marker, and you're like, I have no Slanash models in my army. Cross, yeah. cross, yeah. cross. Yeah, you or definitely you got the stratagem cards, now just don't take out the ones that you can. Yeah, you know, yeah you definitely, use. definitely you could do a yeah. little bit of, like, manage, like table management yeah. to, to get over a lot of that. Yeah, I believe we were playing today, you had your fist and, like, three pages open, I'm trying to look through it, like, well, what can you do? Like, and is, it, yeah, no. is there something that can help me? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but, yeah, you definitely want to read through them, be familiar with what your opponent can do. Because somebody might call you out, like, like, oh, I can't, you can't do that, or you can't do that, and then, like, no, 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 it's right here. Okay, so we are... Done with Chaos Space Marines, moving on. We have a Pit My List. We're going to try to get back through. We have a few of these in backlog. We're going to try to get back through them. Problem is, um, they do take some effort for us. So that's why we haven't done... The last few shows, we've been a little bit busy. So we want to put in a little bit of effort when we uh, review a list. So that's why maybe we haven't done them. Because we didn't feel we could actually uh, contribute something great. But this list is from Jeff. Uh, Jeff sends... He likes to play a little bit different lists. So he's not going for the standard top competitive stuff. You want something that kind of works around that. So I'll run through the list really quickly. He has a patrol detachment with its, sorry, it's, it's Gene Stealer Cults, Tyranids, and Astra Militarum, which are essentially Gene Stealer Astra Militarum. So he has a patrol detachment with two Maguses and five Acolytes, two Primaris Psychers, Sergeant Harker, uh, nine Mortars set into three teams of three, two Mana Cores and two Wyverns. Um, then he has a Battalion Detachment with a Swarm Lord and a Pod, a Dima and a Pod, a Malanthrope in a pod, 24 Hormagons, 23 Hormagons, 3 Ripper Swarms, 7 Command Points, and 18 Drops. Um, the basic tactical summary is he's going for um, 5 Smite Sources. He's got the Hormagons to kind of fill in the Conscript style mm -hmm. role. And then he has, of course, some fast moving stuff. To, like the Hormagons are also fast, they tie him down, he's got a Swarm Lord. And the Artillery will kind of let him, you know, make holes so that his mm -hmm. Tyranids can get to the opponent. So, Darren, you have some um, comments. Yeah, I guess, uh, actually, Jeff showed me this, uh, I guess, a few weeks ago. And uh, I just had, a, you know, uh, he, he made it clear he wants to avoid conscripts and scions because he thinks those are going to get nerfed soon, uh, like before Wars in Atlanta, and might he might have to change his list. On yeah, and he's a, he's, a, he's a paint-heavy guy, so... Yeah. He's yeah. gonna, of course, put a good good job into his army, a lot of conversion, so he doesn't want to. He like... doesn't want to bring like plastic, right? Yeah. And the other thing is, he really wants to try and make the swarm lord work. Um, I think the swarm lord works mm -hmm. in a lot of builds, personally. Yeah. So, um, you know, so he 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 told me he's just bringing his gene stealer patrol detachment to unlock guard to play with tyranids, and so that's kind of the cheapest you could bring a patrol detachment that's literally not completely useless. So five acolytes. Probably useless, but maybe you could. Uh, well, he could drop one of the Maguses, them right? Onto. Yeah, and then uh, two Maguses because um, he wanted to maximize smites. Uh, one of my suggestions was to well put something into that, make it a supreme command, and put a patriarch in there or another Magus, and at least get a CP for it as well. Yeah, drop that's a good call. Drop the acolytes for right? sure. Oh, one hundred percent agree with that. Three three Maguses done. Yeah, three smites good. There might be a slightly better option, but going by his theme and goal, that that, that could be good. Yeah. Uh, I personally think, you know, the Swarm Lord is expensive, but like he wants to use it. But that's a lot of points with the Tyrannocyte that you could fill with, say, Gene Stealers and a Patriarch yeah. and something else. I second that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you had a Swarm Lord to me... So this got used against me, uh, the Netherlands captain. Um, he used it against me. Swarm Lord in a pod, Gene Stealers coming in some other way. And just crushes a unit in your army, mm -hmm. like, right away. But I think the important thing there is that the Gene Stealers are the, the tool that's used, because I've used Hormorgons before with the, uh, uh, the Swarm Lord Slingshot, and it's okay, but not great, but yeah. Gene Stealers would have guaranteed that kill, right? Yeah. 
Uh, I know they're more expensive, but they're also a lot more durable. And uh, Gene said with a five up invulnerable yeah, save, yeah. and then a five up feel no pain. If, with the psychic that's power. almost like a, yeah. with the psychic power from yeah. the Swarm Lord. That's almost like you're saving more than fifty percent of your wounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have a Patriarch in there, I mean, he either makes your Gene Steals even crazier with the strength from beyond, or he mind controls something. I love killing people with their own Storm Ravens. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and and I'm not too familiar with the Dimasheron. It's a uh, it's a character. It's eater. a Forge World, right? Yeah, it's a Forge World um, big uh, bug. It's really fast and it's mean against characters. Okay, so you know that's fine. You keep the mash on there, but that's another thing in a pod, and it's and pods, you know, are, expensive. pods are getting expensive. Yeah. Now, granted, they do more than a Space Marine pod, but uh, yeah. And then a bunch of Hormagons always good. Um, in terms of the guard detachment, like that's fine. Harker's fifty points, uh, but he does let all those things reroll once. Mm-hmm. That's um, the cheapest. It's like the cheapest. Re-roll, effective re-roll way to kind of get have. it for him. It, yeah. I get why he's taking uh, Harker. Harker also opens up some good conversion possibilities. He's like he's fun. like the Predator, so yeah. it makes sense to have Harker yeah. in a Jeet Sealer army. It's kind of like it reminded me of the Predator. Yeah. So uh, I really like uh, not you, yeah. uh, you know, Predator the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a Predator. My <laughs> my other thing about it is so he's got two two Maguses as it stands and two Primaris Psychers for his. Uh, for his smites, right? And I guess you can count the Swarm Lord. So it, it, I, I feel like if you're going to smite spam, you got to smite spam. Yeah. Or uh, I, Five's enough. Five's yeah. good. That's but, ten mortal wounds a turn. Sure. Like, or would that, for denial, would that be better off just, like, taking two, two collections or something? I don't know. It's not always Imperial Soup. <laughs> yeah, well, he can't take those, right? No. He can't take those? No. Oh, yeah, no, no. no and yeah. the Mortar teams are a bargain. They're always a good choice. I, I like that their footprint is really big, like that you can really just fill the whole back of the board with all of his guard, and they all have yeah. like long touches that don't leave not don't need line of sight. Like I actually really like the guard component of this. Well, um, guard are so good. Yeah, and like yeah, guard even, are even great. Chaos but... now, like no, yeah. like guard are great in Imperial Soup. Guard are great because Forge will let them in Chaos, and yeah. guard are great in Nids. Because... But you know, but like for the price of two wyverns, you could take way more mortar teams. <laughs> That is the option. You could go way more mortar and teams. And like another Manticore. If you're going to use Manticores, he doesn't want to use Earthshakers. Nah, so the Wyverns are there as his anti-infantry like infantry kind of clear thing. Yeah. So what you said, like replace the Wyverns with mortars because you're going to get way more bang for buck out of them. Yeah. That makes sense. But I, I've, I've played a lot of games with Wyverns, a unit of three. Well, they split up when you deploy them anyway, mm-hmm. but it's, um, they're fantastic for what they do, especially if you're getting reroll ones to hit. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, the one thing, too, is he can use the primary psychers if he wanted to in a more defensive role to, like, make his mana cores more survivable. So if you're playing something that might take them out, you could give them plus one save, which could be okay. But I don't know. I look at, like, the smite spam, and I'm like, if you're worrying about smite spam, so many other armies do that better. Mm-hmm. That, like, why wouldn't you take, like, chaos if you want to go for smite spam? What does... Nids and Astro Militarum do well in this combo. They do artillery, they do gene stealers hitting you turn one or turn two in the grill, swarm lord, so that kind of stuff. So that's what I would kind of focus yeah. towards is what they do well. And, and the smite spam is great because you're going to tie people down, you're going to do some damage, but it's not everything. You yeah. might be able to shave a few points uh, getting rid of the Malanthrope as well and replacing with the Tyranid Prime just hiding around. Um, I know the Malthrope was the, like, go-to everything in the previous edition, and uh, I like that it's now an HQ slot, but uh, I don't know. I'm not I'm not personally sold on it, but... Uh, He's just trying to use it to protect his, his gaunts. Yeah, like, it yeah. all works. It all, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. he justified everything, but I, I would just... Like, where's your hammer? Where's that thing that's, like... It doesn't like, seem to be a hammer. Like, like the... Like, I would say if you're going to change one thing, add the gene stealers and have them so they can kind of teleport or not necessarily yeah. drop out. What's, what, what brings them in? The uh, trigons. Trigons. The tunnels. So had to take a yeah. trigon, take the gene stealers. That way you could tie back your enemy so that it takes them an extra turn to reach your artillery. Or you could like force your enemy to deploy in a very protective way. Because if, if, you don't, if you're moving gaunts in, a space Marine player doesn't have to bubble wrap as much. Yeah, they're not as afraid of gaunts. I would not be as afraid of gaunts. Yeah. <laughs> I killed like 60 in one turn today. Yeah. So. <laughs> Any final comments? Hopefully that helped you, Jeff. Uh, anything else to add, guys? Uh, nope. 
I think that was pretty good. I know we had a, a lot of points all over the place there, but <laughs> I, I, I definitely think you're not your damage output could be a little bit better. Yeah, I think he's at Warzone Atlanta. He's going to see the business. There. Oh, yeah, you're so, going to see some crazy and stuff. And there may be new codexes out before then. Well, the Death Guard for sure. Um, he's going to see Mortarians and Magnuses. And, yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to answer your guys' questions. We put a poll out on Facebook and Twitter. And... Um, I think we answered some of them. Um, Alex Gonzalez, shout out. He's the one that sent me the Corn Berserkers with the, um, uh, what uh, are the Emperor's Children, Emperor's Children thing. So uh, that was a question. He did not put it for the cast. He just asked me, but we'll put it up there. So uh, why don't you run through some of the questions, and I'll pull up the Twitter ones. All right. So these are Facebook questions. Uh, Garrett Lowe asks us why all the Forge World hate. A ban list is digestible, but an all-out ban is lazy and divisive. So that is <laughs> that is geared towards Capital City Bloodbath, where we banned all Forge World. Um, why the hate? Basically, the Forge World rules would have needed a custom-written FAQ for us, because a lot of them didn't work. For example, you can take Earthshaker batteries with no crew. To me, that doesn't make logical sense. It smells of a typo, but I don't know. Right? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think of that there? Uh... Don't ask me about Forge World, man. You know what? <laughs> yeah. I'm biased. We actually all have a lot of it. Darren no, and I have actually, a lot of Forge World. Actually, I, I, I understand why a TO would ban Forge World. Because the rules are not well written, right? And, I and but... you would get rid of your Malefic Lord thing and mm -hmm. your Giant Chaos Bond thing and all that stuff, right? Like, I understand why you ban it. Um, yeah, like Malefic Lords makes sense for 30 points yeah. if you're taking one or two of them in a Chaos Guard army, and it's kind of cool. But when you're taking nine of them in a Brimstone army, yeah. it's yeah. a different animal. And you know, right? making yeah. a, a band of 32 power above does, is not any more sensible, yeah. right? Like, I, know, just a like, random as a, level. As a TO, for you to do whatever you, you want, right? Like, I, I don't really see it like that. I think it makes sense when the addition is so early to sort of put the brakes on things that are outside of the norm and just say, okay, guys, we just started. Let's play this, and we'll deal with the rest of it later. Let's just play this part right now. I don't know. I think, I, I didn't even bat an eye when you guys said that you want, didn't want Forge World in your first... Yeah, maybe in the future, yeah. I, I kind of appreciate tournaments that are letting me take it because mm -hmm. I got the books. I'm looking through them, and I'm just adding the... Like, I'm not a hater. I'm just adding the crazy filth. And if you don't like that, you don't like that. If you like it, you like it. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question is from Mark andre uh, Any good lists that don't include horrors or malefic lords? So I guess he means chaos lists. That's, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> because, yes, there totally are. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> malefic lords and brimstones are the no-brainer choice. That's very strong. But, you know, if you want some survivable units to get in your opponent's grill, um, Thousand Suns do the job. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, there's, you know, I think Berserker uh, Spam is a thing. Yeah, was it uh, Nick Nanavadi at Nova did pretty well in Invitational, running like a couple of units, Berserker, some War Talons, some, like a real soupy list. Yeah. Um, I think he had some Brimstone Zender and maybe two or three. There are no, they're a cheap yeah. troop choice that doesn't die. Yeah. Like, but there's lots of stuff, and if you're like including in Death Guard, I'm sh like, you could run a, a pretty survivable Death Guard. I mean, it's super elite, so it does suffer to certain mm -hmm. builds, but. I definitely think that the book made a lot of stuff better. Yeah. yeah. I and think you could run Chaos Space... Like, in an ETC event, you could run a Chaos Space Room player and a Demon player now, I think. And it's um, and it's early. Only, like, three or four, four or whatever number of codex is out. And yeah, wait for the The game changes with every single codex, basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Brian Horton asks us, what point value stops Malefic Lord spam? He thinks it's 75. That's more <laughs> than double. Well, it's more. It's almost. It's not quite triple, but because they're thirty points, yeah, it's sixty. That's more than double. Yeah, you're right. So, sure. I mean, yeah, two hundred. Well, you got to think, <laughs> think about it this way. Um, for forty points, you don't see Primaris Psyker yeah, build. I was gonna say, what's a Primaris Psyker cost? Yeah. You do. What do you mean? People taking five Primaris Psykers with Celestine in a. Okay, but it, it's not as harped on. Yeah. So thirty points is and too low. Super Saiyan when you seventy five to me would be way too high because yeah, to then you might as well just take start like taking a, an actual power armored marine psyker. Yeah, like I know they're a bit more than that, but not by much. Forty maybe. Forty five. Forty five. <laughs> yeah. Forty. Yeah. Anything, but forty it would be a twenty five percent increase. Five probably not. Sorry, thirty three percent increase would be like uh, making 40. them thirty five. You're probably still taking. 
Probably. <laughs> I'm not a big increase. He's still got some brimstone. So right? 40, yeah. I would still take him. <laughs> yeah. So you have to think about it. Um, a Herald is 83 with a 24-inch smite, but it also gives plus one strength to all horror units within six, which is like, whatever. But like... Yeah. 50? 50 would slow down the spam enough. So 50 would take away two or three of them in the list that was going to take them. But it would also free up those HQ slots for other things. Because the slots are almost more valuable than the models at that point. Yeah. All right. Uh, West Bertozzi says, how to best defeat them and all their weaknesses? I'm not sure what he's referring to. How to best defeat Chaos Space Marines and what are all their weaknesses? Okay. So generally their weakness is low model count. Yeah. Um, be weight of dice. Weight of dice, yeah. um, smites, um, anything that can... Like, you know, a lot of guard artillery, plasma guns. You know, that one <laughs> yeah. round of overcharging plasma guns might take out a unit of something, right? Yeah. That's where Brimstone's kind of counter that. And I know that's demons. These are, we're talking Chaos yeah, Space Marines, yeah. but you're, you're, you're looking at Chaos Soup in this edition. Yeah. I think you, you play them like you play against Space Marines, basically. Well, no, there's a lot of combat elements. Yeah. So if yeah, you know a that a different. Demon Prince can double move or Magnus, make sure that he can only touch your bubble wrap. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're at range. Um, try to bait them out. Give them a unit that makes them, you know, so Magnus comes out too early so you can maybe kill Magnus. There's a lot of little games you can play within it. But I think, yeah, if you play to the meta, kill Marines, kill some Hordes, you should be fine. And just be aware of what they can do to you. So if you see Emperor's Children, Corn Berserkers, don't fight them. Honestly, don't fight them. Shoot them, run away, bubble wrap them, speed bump them, and just be aware of what they can do. All right, uh, Val uh, asks us, do the benefits of running a faction-focused list outweigh Chaos Soup? You can do both. I think you can do both. You yeah. just move some things around, and the, the Force Orc structure is such that you can usually make your complete detachments of one faction, so you, and you can still have a soup. Yeah. Even yeah. if you have only one detachment, that is super soupy. You can have your other two be... And I think they specified that you, if you have your, whatever, uh, World Eaters detachment, you get access to those stratagems, but you can use those stratagems of anybody as long as it doesn't say in the stratagem specifically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think you can still do both. I think soup is ultimately always going to be the right answer. Now, you can do more now. You could take a pure Alpha Legion list and be yeah, like, and sweet, okay. fluffy, and work. Mm. Uh, Night Lords or some of the other ones, maybe like Iron Warriors got kind of hit with the they suck always so it's not really a big deal but <laughs> okay uh, Jared asked us uh, well his second question is kind of uh, uh, not that relevant anymore predictions for changes in the new Edmech book as we're already being released yeah but, sorry uh, we're a bit late sorry, with this Jared. show uh, but his first question what do you think of the open war cards they're we awesome oh, awesome yeah. Oh yeah, that's I think the best way to the play. The best way to play just yeah. random games. Yeah, I want to go get a set. There's so yeah, much. It's actually that was like yeah, it was a blast. I was like, okay, let's see what this deployment is like because we drew them. Yep. Oh, it it's the best way to play. Yeah, yeah. 100%. and e- even though uh, we played a couple of games today, even though they were ridiculous, they were very close. Both of them, it's, like it made for close games. Yeah, I was yeah. impressed that they were super close. Which is <laughs> now we cool. also took softer lists. That's true. Yeah. Yep. So maybe because if the three of us took our tune tournament list, maybe it wouldn't be as fun. It would be one sided. Mm-hmm. But you we embraced anything, it, right? right? We totally embraced it. Yeah. We just kind of took some stuff that we wanted to take. And you know, like, I played some of the, the rulebook missions already, and they're already kind of stale, because they're not that different from previous. No, they're great. Yeah. I could play the rulebook missions over and over again. They're yeah. great. I'm not a huge fan. Man, when in 7th edition Fantasy, we played Pitch Battle, six games in a tournament, all the same. <laughs> that was the thing. <laughs> all right, Adam Love says, well, asked us, what do you think of the new Death Guard Codex? Any synergies you enjoy? Uh, there's a few. Uh, one of them will come up, but um, which we'll talk about in a later question. But yeah, there is some definite stuff you can do with, with survivability and buffs to hit. Oh, yeah. Mortarion's a great addition to a lot of forces yeah. because, as I said earlier, he does the mortal wounds. He does a lot of damage. Um, you got to be careful with Chaos Lady. You don't go too big, too elite. Mm-hmm. That's a big problem. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I designed many lists with like Mortarion... Um, Magnus and like some <laughs> what are those uh, hell turkeys and I was like this could work but it's four models I'm going to die turn one do a lot of stuff yeah I think um, I think death guard like a, a death guard army is going to be hard to kill yeah and but so it's I elite as long as you don't go too elite so you, you I think you got to bring your your pox walkers oh, uh, pox I see so many so people good. right now painting like a hundred pox mm-hmm. walkers and they got all these synergies built in of people that help them regenerate and build mm-hmm. larger units and stuff 
I think Mortarian is just, just going to be really hard to kill. Yeah, Death Guard are definitely... Yeah. It, going back to a previous question, you could just run Death Guard right yeah. now. Yeah, and could. I'm assuming when Thousand Suns come out, they'll be the same. But the mini legions in the Chaos book, Chaos Soup, so yeah. So there's great synergies, it's great. Yeah, no, I really like the Death Guard book. It's very, it's very flavorful. Very flavorful. Um, okay, uh, Jonathan Harrop says, Who's cooler, Argyll, Tal, Sevatar, or Karn? You know, Argatal is the uh, that dude who turned into the monster in the Word Bears. Uh, Sevatar is the first captain in yep. uh, what Night Lords, Night Lords, or Night yeah. And Karn is Karn. Karn's my favorite because he's a duality of a of a. When you read him in the fluff, he's a very calm, well spoken. He gives the and then he goes freaking ape shit. Yeah, and he goes, <laughs> he's the calm voice of reason within the Legion. Yeah. And then he goes like the craziest. So he goes from one spectrum to the other. So he's 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 my favorite. Yeah. I like uh, I like word bearers a little bit. I've always uh, I, yeah do you? Uh, well not on the table maybe but uh, I like the uh, I don't know the mystique. Feel like the whole thing with Ariel Tal and how they went into the warp for Lord Guy and they cry. And, and they and cry. Also emo. <laughs> Daddy doesn't love uh, me. Yeah, Daddy yeah. doesn't love me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, sure, you like him. That's fine. That's <laughs> a snowflake. I don't know, so am I. And I never did like the Night Lord's fluff, so I, yeah, I like Karn the best. Yeah, Cruz always. is kind of a crybaby, too. Yeah. <sighs> uh, Roston Hamilton asks us, best list for Corn Berserkers? I think Emperor's Children. I think Emperor's <laughs> Children spam with Corn Berserkers. I think that's... Because, like, you can, you can bump up with no fear of them charging you, so you're fine. Like, just bump them up. I, I think that's, that's amazing. I think that's the list you're going to hear a lot of hate about. Now... Yeah, I, honestly, that's the only way to run them, which sounds stupid because they're not word, word bear, uh, world eaters, word sorry. Eaters, yeah. But Emperor's Children Berserkers are a fucking thing, man. So you could run them uh, Alpha Legion, right? Yeah, so you could infiltrate them up. But you're running at the opponent, so I guess if he gets within 12, you're charging him. He's no longer, yeah, they're all good. It's all, it's... Yeah. For keeping you the could, advance in charge on the generic wouldn't be that bad either. So maybe I think you put, like... Four units of corn berserkers that get that uh, infiltrate stratagem, and then you set up a gun line of double shooting. Is infiltrate means. better than going first? I don't know. Yeah, it might be. It might be. But yeah, basically, you could run corn berserkers now and be very happy. Very yeah. happy. Yeah. Like, what do you want to do? Like, what are you scared of? Like, I think Ryan said that earlier. Minus one hits a great rule, yeah. but always striking first is great too. I'm pretty scared of forty berserkers of any uh, d- like any legion like running at me turn one. Not iron warriors, but yeah, any, any <laughs> of the good legions. Even they would probably be pretty scary. Do we have any more questions from Facebook? We have one question that was asked a long time ago from Adam that we never got around to answering. And uh, sorry, sorry, Adam. Yeah, sorry about that, Adam. But it's a question about dark angels, basically. Um, should he buy two Vendreds or two Predators? So that's the eternal controversy. Two Vendreds or Predators? Vendreds or Predators. And you, I guess you could add a third arm versus a Devastator Squad. Vendreds. Vendreds synergize really well with that list. 100%. Right? If we're talking Dark Angels... Dark Angels, yeah. Vendreds work well. Because you have Azrael, you yeah. have a Dark Shroud. Yeah. Vendreds are great. Predators have a big footprint... They could block some line of sight, but their points to gun ratio isn't as good as a Vendra. Huh? And well, they went down to to ninety from hundred. So I re- I like the idea of predators. I really like the auto. Ca- well, I shouldn't call it an auto cannon anymore. I really like the predator auto cannon. I think it's called the TB yeah, three yeah. like multiple damage shots. I think stuff like that is important. Uh, like, or at least it can be important if you don't have that tool in your army somewhere else. The the advantage I like about dreadnoughts is they don't degrade, um, and if you need a counter assault unit, they so can he's go got a three four six. They can go. That's ahead. got a three four six save. Yeah, three plus ahead. four plus then a six plus. That's not bad. It's not bad, and um, they also can counter charge if people get close. Hmm. Heavy flamers means Overwatch, so you don't want to charge them if you if you, go that, route, if you yeah, go that I, route. I do love having the twin Laz and combat weapon uh, venerable dreadnought sitting in the back line, knocking out two Laz cannon shots a turn, a two plus to hit. Like your opponent is you, like doesn't want to eat two Laz Cannon hits a turn, but it's also not easy to go into their backfield and get it, because he's got a Flamer, probably, and a big fist, right? Yeah. Like, and it's not something you can ignore. And that like Dreadnought that. can take a Predator. Sorry, can take a Razorback. A twin-ass Razorback. Uh, the second part of this question yeah. is more they around... Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> second part of the question is around Deathwing uh, Deep Striking versus in a Land Raider. <sighs> 
So you, if, if you're going pure Deathwing, you need that Land Raider unit to push up the board, unless you're going some kind of like backfield survivability thing. Yeah, I think it's hard to run pure Deathwing right now. I think if you're going pure Deathwing, you need the last cannons on that Land Raider to just open some open some trucks for you or open anything, maybe. right? Yeah. yeah, I feel like Deathwing right now, before the Codex comes out, is really a one, maybe two unit thing that is a harasser that you keep striking. Yeah, I think, I think they... They just aren't, aren't a very good option, but if you want to take them, and I have a whole Deathwing army, you need both. Um, ah, do you need a Land Raider, though? You could just put two Terminator units in the back corner, and you could drop the rest of the Termies in for some diversity, like for some mobility and some ground control. How, how do you feel about Terminators as a unit? I, I feel they're, like, they're caught between two worlds. Like yeah. They don't have enough wounds. They, don't have, they have a great save. They're expensive. They have mediocre damage output compared to like all this other stuff. I think they're just kind of like Still in the expensive. middle. They're just not good enough. Yeah. They could be cheaper. They could be a little bit cheaper. Okay. Like five points might make a big difference. Well, because they obviously went down when they reduced the cost of power fists, which yeah. was super helpful. I think if you run Terminators, you run a small unit that just strikes down somewhere for a specific purpose. Okay. It's hard to say. I, I'd have to figure it out. It's not a top tier list, um, so you're taking them knowing that they're suboptimal. Mm -hmm. And I personally, if you can put something you can hide in a back corner, Commissar Fifty Conscripts in a back corner, then you can do whatever you want with your Deathwing. You can wait till turn three to come in. You can come in turn one. You can come all together on one flank. You can you can have that tactical flexibility. And if you lose that with a Land Raider. And with the Land Raider, you have to deploy it. It's in the front. It's going to get shot. It's going to take all the enemy's firepower. It might make it. It might not. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. If you're going Land Raider, you want more stuff on the board, and you want to be in their grill. You want to stop them. I think yeah. if you're going Land Raider, you should go two. Like, I, 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 yeah. Three. Yeah. Like, I like having more <laughs> than three. one. Yeah. Or three. Yeah. It's not like a gimmick, right? Like, it's like yeah. one of those, like those old things. Do you go all assaulting or half assaulting? You go mm -hmm. all assaulting. Do you go all shooting or no shooting? Like, it's, you're better off going all mobility and dropping in than nothing. And with conscripts, man, you're not going to get tabled. Yeah. Like, who can kill 50 conscripts in a back corner turn one? Nobody. Apparently, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think they have enough shots to no, do it. Time, time, just just do it yeah. yeah, with the commissar, no. Okay, no. so we have two more questions. We have from Sheep Hammer Simon. Can slash should you stack the Nurgle spell from CSM minus one to hit and the same name but different tech spell from the Death Guard Codex that's also minus one to hit? Yeah. Mortarion is very rude question. if you do so. So can you? <sighs> it's the same it's the name. Same name, but it's a different spell. It's a different spell, different lore. They should. Why did they do that? <laughs> like seriously, guys, just change the name. Should you and think the answer should is no. No. Should, should is no. Yeah. Right. We all agree should is no. Yep. Yeah. Can you? I think yes. I think I uh, think in the right tournament with the right fact, yes. Not the same. Yeah, like I, I, ask your I think you're obligated to ask your to <laughs> yeah, before yeah. the tournament with that one. Yeah, don't, don't just show up and assume that, oh, no, I'm totally going to get this, guys, and then have an argument with all five of your opponents. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, you want to really... But clearly, I don't think that's what they intended, but... Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Um, but I would say can, yes, should, no. Um, G Money, which is Corn Lord, T.O. for Du Bois GT. Oh, yeah? Where does Bellicor fit in? And if he fits better CSM than Demons, why is that... Um, mostly an excuse for him to gripe on this. So Bellicor's in a really weird place. He's a demon demon prince that has access to a Chaos Space Marine lore that only generally affects Chaos Space Marines. He's a really good demon prince, too. He, has a lot, he can cast lots of powers. He's, he's great. But he can't cast any of those powers on himself because he's not a Chaos Space Marine. So he, he can't warp time himself. Or any demons that he's with. But he gives reroll ones to hit for demons and Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, I don't know. Like, this, he's did, lost they, did they mean to do that with Belcor? Or I, I, I kind of think so. He's a better demon prince, he, but he has more points, yeah. so you pay for that. And he wrecks. He's good. Yeah. Um, are princes still hot? I don't know if princes are still hot. In my mind, they're not as hot as they once were because of this book. You have more more options, but I would say he fits good in a chaos soup army. I'd say. He allows you, primarily, if you have Chaos Space Ring elements, to do things. Um, but generally, he doesn't really work in a demon army. If you're taking a demon army, you're taking him to just do damage. Because yeah. most of his spells aren't going to affect your army. Which you don't really need. Yeah. So but he, he, he's he, weird. He would be able to do, in a mostly demon force, cast the new spell Death Hex, 
which is the one that shuts down invulnerable saves nearby. That yes. could be something that he useful. could do that one. That's right. Like, but you can get cheaper, cheaper psychers to do death X. Yeah, but he's a good psyker. He's got lots yeah, of powers. Sure. He's good at hitting. He's eight wounds, so you can't target him. He goes really well behind brimstones. Could you use him as just a smite death hex every turn? Yes. Would that be okay? Yes, it would be okay. Um, I don't know. He's not in my list. He's not in a lot of lists anymore. Yeah, I, I haven't seen him except that time I played Nick at uh, Capital City, and that's because he had Bellicor and nothing else. So yeah, yeah, and he got punked by last game. So <laughs> he fits better with CSM than Demons for sure. If that's what you're going at from a fluff point of view, yes, he is. He's better in a CSM force, but he's 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 a little bit caught between two worlds. So he's good in Chaos Soup. So, bam, that's it for your questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ryan, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Darren. Good. It was good. Good fun. So, so with that, guys, if you want more information about what we do, our YouTube channel, our podcast, all that good stuff, you go to canhammer.ca for more information. And if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash canhammer. But all that link and all that stuff is on canhammer.ca. So check that out. With that, have a good one. Good night. Good night.